I'm also a big Cantwell fan, and I may have called too early prior to the explanation, but um, it seems that y'all kind of canned him for impolite speech. Well, he hasn't been canned, so, maybe I'm uh, so let's reason. get that clarified. Uh, Chris Cantwell has been uh, indefinitely right. suspended from Free Talk Live. Right. Yeah. And Understood. I would have liked to have had Chris uh, to come on and explain himself about this, but I got a call this morning from Mark saying he was going to not be on the show if Chris Cantwell was going to be on the show, which made me realize there was probably some okay. sort of very serious situation here that uh, that had developed over this. And uh, indeed, yeah. basically what was communicated to me was essentially that uh, there were multiple listeners claiming they're going to, you know, pull their amps if Chris uh, continued on the air. Of course, now we have people saying they're going to pull their amps because Chris is off the air. The amps further, don't matter to me. And further, uh, right. there, you know, is obviously the specter of the possibility of this blowing up into to where, you know, radio stations start to have a problem and that kind of thing, Daniel. So that's where I was coming from, you know, this morning when I agreed with Mark to go ahead and put Chris on uh, indefinite suspension. Right. Over this. So be, before anybody continues, I just want to give some insight into what freedom of speech actually means. Because there are some people that oh, think that freedom of speech that. means that it's freedom from people disagreeing with your speech or freedom to not have repercussions for your speech. What freedom of speech actually means is that you should not be arrested for things that you say. Right. It does not mean that private businesses cannot tell you to leave their business. It does not mean that a radio station is not allowed to say, we're not carrying you on our station anymore. I, I remember a couple yep. of years um, ago when some NPR host got fired for something that they said, people were saying, but freedom of speech. And I'm like, wait a second, this guy's got a show on NPR. He got fired. Are they violating my freedom of speech because they're not hiring me to talk on their radio? And of course, nobody would say that you know me not being hired by NPR is a violation of freedom of speech. Now, I don't know if we've made it clear yet. What happened was Chris Cantwell on his Twitter feed used the N word, and obviously in multiple tweets. Obvi well, okay, I haven't read all the tweets. All I know is he called somebody who who he was having an argument with, uh, apparently the the N word, and this person happened to be black. But either way, you know the when that word is used, everything else around it just doesn't matter it's and the nuclear option and i wish that wasn't the case right. you know i wish that you know there could be this explanation that chris had when he was sitting out on my porch when this uh was going down last night we were you know hanging out and i expect he's going to be back on the porch right. hanging out tonight too uh that's my understanding but you know he mentioned to me what had happened and my reaction was sort of like you know the the equivalent of a face palm like oh chris you know what what are you what are you doing yeah. man and uh Again, all the context doesn't matter to people who just hear that such and such said that word. And Chris could explain, explain, explain till he's blue in the face. I don't think Chris Cantwell is a racist. No, I don't I, either. I don't think that just because somebody right, says right. that word that they are a racist. But what it, unfortunately, and you know, this is the way it is, that particular word sets people off. And the explanations won't matter to anyone. Generally, to many, many people, they won't matter. And so we had to do, right. you know, we had to take corrective action. So um, I agree. And if I could say a couple things real quick. Go ahead, Daniel. Uh, I, I, uh, that's a, I agree. That's a very poor choice of words. And it, it's, it's, never, it's never helpful or productive in a debate. Never, ever. I mean, it's, it's completely just obliterated. Well, he wasn't having a debate. It was just, a, you, you know, you're having a fight with Chris Cantwell. Right, yeah. He's yeah. going to get nasty. He's going to go for the right. lowest possible blow that he can go for. <laughs> and from where, you know, from where he was coming from, for the character of Chris Cantwell, this post made sense for him. And, you know, he doesn't right. care about the consequences to him because he's got a fan base that will support him no matter, you know, what he says yeah, and does. Absolutely. In fact, they like it when things like this happen uh, because, you There's know. There's more people to hate on at that point. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh. So I'm frustrated by it, Daniel. I love Chris Cantwell. I Same think, here. I think he's a good person, um, truly. I right. truly believe that about him. Cantwell in real life is not Cantwell on the internet, and Cantwell in real life is pretty awesome, and I don't pay much attention to Cantwell on the internet until he starts dropping 
you know, in bombs all over the place. Yeah. And it that um, makes it very difficult on me. Um, I understand. I also I also want to be clear that I don't I wasn't saying he has free speech on your show. He doesn't have free speech at your show. I agree there too. I just there's so many things that y'all say and and I agree with most things. I'm have many arguments about cops and military and people get offended about that too. And there's people you talk to about the flag and about the military who will have a very similar reaction to if someone uses the N word. Um, I'll give you that. And there's no doubt about it. You, you absolutely are right about that. In fact, we have lost radio stations because of our position about war in the past. That's absolutely true, but yeah, at but least that's an intellectual position, and it's right. not just a slur. Right. I'm I'm very happy to take the stand um, that you know I'm I'm it's fine with me. I'll lose the station over, you know, defending veterans' rights to call into this show and say that as one veteran as more than one veteran has uh, that the military is nothing but a bunch of paid killers working for liars and thieves in Washington DC i'm willing to take that stand because i can't rebut that statement when chris cantwell um chooses to argue with a guy on the internet like his the, a, a man tweeted at him a few times um on the internet and his response to those tweets wasn't anything except shut up nigger I mean, it is a completely— Okay, I'm going to hit the uh, dump button on you there. You can't say that on the radio, You can Mark. say that word on the radio. Okay, I'm not going to let you say it on the radio. Fine. All I'm doing is reporting the news. <laughs> yeah. Um, and see, so, I mean, you know, when that's how you argue first off the bat, then you haven't made any kind of cogent points, and it's, you know, it's unacceptable. Then I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to have to deal with this situation. And— Right. In dealing with that situation, I'm like, okay, I call around to the consultants, I talk to people, I spent several hours this morning getting this all put together and deciding who's going to do what, and you know, half of it, half of the um, recommendations were fire him. Uh, one of them was uh, from our biggest consultant was fire him and don't tell him why, um, and the <laughs> and the the others were suspension. So I opted for suspension. This is the the soft right. option. The other condition for suspension was uh, you got to make an apology, Chris. Whatever that apology sounds like, he's for not going to do that. And he said, no, he's not going to. So right. I'm not at this point. Like my contention is, is that he's suspended. His contention is he's fired. No, he's been saying he's suspended. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, like I could see why he people would say he's fired. Suspended. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, he has said he's been suspended indefinitely, but I think most of us kind of figure what that means. Okay. Uh, Thanks for the call tonight, Daniel. Yeah. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is here at 855-450-FREE. Did we do the right thing in suspending Chris Cantwell? 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Warning. If you've recently declared bankruptcy, you're going to want to change the station because there's an alternative to bankruptcy, and it's faster than you'd ever think possible. But if you've already declared bankruptcy and have missed this opportunity, you'll want to change the station now. Here it is. Right now, the company that has resolved more credit card debt than anyone in the U.S. is available to settle your debt, too. You may reduce your debt with one low monthly program payment. If you call right now, Freedom Debt Relief will show you how low your monthly program payment could be for free. Call now. 1-800-399-1993. That's 1-800-399-1993. If you're struggling with debt, this could be your answer. And the bigger your debt, the more money you could save. To find out for free how much of your hard-earned money Freedom Debt Relief could help you save, call now. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance. From the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. 
837 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. And I use the downsizedc.org yeah. uh, system for responding to my Congress critters and talking to, right. the, to the thieves and liars and despots in, in Washington, D.C. And in these letters, they outline the issue for me. And then they flush it down the toilet. And it's so demeaning. Yeah. They just don't care what I think. I can tell them, you know, like... He'll oh, pretend like he cares if he's trying to get elected. They only care what you think if you're giving them a check with, you know, five digits on mm. it. Then you might be able to get them to do something. Yeah. But that's just one senator among the 535 <laughs> disgusting, dishonorable thieves. What's a guy to do? These lobbying groups, they run Washington. Washington has been taken over. It does not belong to the American people. It doesn't do anything for the American people. It is a bad, bad place. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. The toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. We've got the news about the so-called USA Freedom Act on the way. Uh, but a lot of people obviously want to talk about the drama behind the scenes. It really wasn't <laughs> behind the scenes, right? Like this has been sort of out in the open all day long here today. If you've been on the Internet, on social media at all, uh, you knew this was coming. You knew this discussion was coming here tonight. And uh, we're certainly going to take your calls about why Chris Cantwell is not sitting in our studio here tonight. It's great to have you here, Daryl. I mean, it's always nice having you on the show. Daryl's our normal Friday night uh, co-host. Uh, we're going to continue taking your calls and thoughts here in a moment. 855-450-FREE is our number. And Skype in at username lrn.fm. Are, are you a real estate agent, broker owner, or even an entrepreneur looking for Chinese investment? Did you know that Chinese investors spin up to spent... Um, Let's see, $115 billion in real estate in countries like the U.S., Canada, U.K., and Australia last year. And they're expected to spend another $1.4 trillion in the next 10 years. Obviously, this represents a real opportunity for people that want to cash in. If you want to learn how to find and sell to Chinese buyers, there's, there's only one course available. It was created by an American. Paul Salo, who himself uh, lived and sold real estate in China to the Chinese. He lived in Asia since Reagan was uh, president and is now sharing decades of selling secrets to a um, in a simple course that you can take online. No need to go anywhere. You can start studying today. Opt in to China Cash Buyers free mini course at ChinaCashBuyers.com and have a look uh, at the quality and depth of the information he provides for free. I think you'll like it. Paul, the creator of China Cash Buyers, is a libertarian, and uh, you know he listens to Free Talk Live. So, you, if if ideology matters to you, there's the go. He's the real deal. And this course costs pennies. It took him decades of hard work to learn the lessons he teach to you, teaches to you in a few hours. It doesn't matter if you're a, a newbie real estate agent who speaks no Chinese at all in an area where Chinese aren't even looking yet, or if you're a Chinese national fluent in Mandarin and in a hot area. The system works for all types of real estate agents to turn you into the go-to agent for, uh, for high-value, wealthy Chinese buyers. Go to ChinaCashBuyers.com. 
Enter your email to get started. You can join the thousands of agents who've transformed their business um, and the future by selling to the highest value clients, or you can get left behind. It's your choice. Go to ChinaCashBuyers.com, enter your email, and get started. This is your one opportunity. He's only made a commitment for one ad, so look, don't expect me to remind you again later. ChinaCashBuyers.com. All right, so Chris Campbell is uh, on an indefinite suspension due to a Twitter post that used the N-word uh, that he made at some point yesterday. Uh, that is what we're discussing at the moment. We're actually going to continue with your calls and thoughts here at 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Thomas in North Carolina. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Thomas. Hello. How are you guys doing? Good. Thomas, go ahead. Yeah, I just I just wanted to chime in on this uh, Cantwell thing. I think you guys may made the right choice. I mean, free speech is one thing, but you guys are a private enterprise, and if someone says something that has a, has a certain appearance in the public view, that reflects back on you guys. I mean, let's remember, this is you guys aren't the first to have to do this. You can't, well, I mean, Cop Clock did it to him, Voice for Men, several other groups. So standing on principle is one thing, but, you know, I don't know what Cantwell is like in real life, so I'm not going to attack his character. I don't think that's right, but when you are a public persona, and Cantwell is one of these, I guess, celebritarians, if you want to use the term, and so when you have a public persona, that reflects when you everything you do on social media reflects you as a person. Even if he is, you know, a wonderful guy in person, you know, actions do have consequences. Free speech does not mean you're protected from consequences. Free speech means you're protected from government. And being libertarians means that we believe that ethics and morals apply to should be applied to government, but also to people. Even if those people aren't, even if those people are so-called uh, heroes in the movement, I know of the uh, one post someone wrote a couple very recently. It was called, I think, it was called "Burn Your Heroes," or you might something about how you know well-known libertarians in the movement that. We should focus on principles rather than personalities, and that's the important. And to me, that's you know that's the important thing. I tend to agree. Um, I mean, obviously, the you know the <laughs> the 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 issue of notoriety is real, and you know if you've got more notoriety, you're going to get uh, more follows. This has no. Um, relationship to me and like this is Cantwell's uh, Twitter account he can do what he wants on it but I really the the fact is is we know what happens when that word gets said we've got Imus to look at Dr. Laura um, and we Dr. Have- Laura lost her entire radio career because she said the n-word right I and- don't even think that Imus actually said the n-word he said he had it hoes Right. He yeah, said something else that was construed to be racist. And I don't think it was even him. It was one somebody on his uh, on his show. It, but, it was somebody on the show, and then he repeated it immediately after. Yeah. I've heard the segment. And I think that uh, that uh, Anthony Cumia lost his uh, gig at, on Opie and Anthony on satellite, not even on a radio That's true. station. Thomas, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Look, I support the idea of free speech. And, of course, Chris Cantwell knows that there's no free Free speech on national radio, right? So he's he moderates himself when he comes into the studio, and he doesn't say the f word because uh, he knows that if he does that more than a few times, we're gonna have to say you gotta go. And I've said uh, that on the air. Yeah, I have. You know, like I went off one time and had a uh, big argument with Ian. And um, oh yeah, you'd have been fired anywhere else, probably. Yeah. But we suspended me as I. That's right. I suspended me um, as a result. It wasn't a very long suspension, but. I showed, uh, you know, remorse relatively quickly, um, and that's, uh, you know, all I really proposed to do was uh, suspend Cantwell for, you know, a short period of time, considering he's only on once a week, and then, you know, because he's only on once a week, it would sound like a longer period of time, and then he could write some kind of, you know, remorseful little tweet or whatever but it is. But he doesn't have remorse. That's it's, Chris Cantwell. Yeah, he doesn't. I mean, I don't know... Maybe I've heard him apologize once, but I don't think I have. Well, he says, uh, and I think rightly so, he says he doesn't apologize unless he absolutely means it. I think he said he was sorry when he cursed on the air, because he did curse on the air once, and we had to dump him. His apologies are meaningful to him, and so he's not going to step up and make an apology if he doesn't mean it, but what am I supposed to do in that circumstance? I mean, I don't... 
all I've said at this point is that he's suspended until he can make an apology, and or at least an apology is part of the suspension or whatever, and then there you go. Let's go to Glenn and Call Philly. Him. Glenn, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Daryl, and Mark. Uh, yes, hello, gentlemen. Yeah, pretty much agree with um, empath- empathetic to everything you're saying about how this is being handled. I think you're doing a good job. However, this is this. I think this is uh, actually a. Um, a conspiracy by Cantwell himself. Uh, he know he himself knows that there's no such thing as bad press, so he's just trying to get his Andy Warhol 15 minutes of fame sooner rather than later. You know, uh huh. But I'm bum. All right, so um, I, I want to disagree <laughs> with the statement of there's I no just, such thing just, as bad press. I, I, I know, think I that the people that, that take that position that. are akin to manure salesmen because not only do they get you to take their crap, they get you to pay them money for it. Mm-hmm. Right, right. I'm, I don't either. I just I was doing it because it's you know frequently recurred. But um, the, what I, was, I think this is kind of a tempest in the sea. This, this is just like one of those topics where we all know what's really going on, and you know. But there are these societal prohibitions, uh, re- reminiscent of George Carlin's seven you know words that you can't say. You know, and we all know the words you can't say on the air and stuff. And and, and Glenn, like you thank you, out, man. I appreciate. It. I see where you're coming from. We'll come back with more here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. In the U.S. alone, a home invasion occurs every 13 seconds. On top of that, the average response time for 911 is over 15 minutes. That just won't cut it. Don't allow yourself or the important people in your life to be victims. When seconds matter, don't be caught stumbling for your firearm. Get the protection you deserve. Get yourself a hidden holster from hiddenholster.com. It's the original hidden holster. The Hidden Holster is quick, easy, and convenient. It's versatile enough for the home, workplace, or virtually anywhere else you might need it. Have peace of mind with your firearm close by at all times. Go to HiddenHolster.com. That's HiddenHolster.com. If you own a firearm, you need a Hidden Holster. Your protection matters, and self-defense is the best defense. Go to HiddenHolster.com. That's HiddenHolster.com. The original Hidden Holster. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Due to an upturn in the economy, Main Street Business Loans has pre-approved the release of millions of dollars in small business funding. Your business may already be pre-approved to receive up to $250,000. We've sent out millions of pre-approval letters. We see the economy growing, and our underwriters believe now is the time to invest in your business so you can grow faster and make more money. And we're prepared to give you up to $250,000 to do it. Your funds can be available in five days. 
There are no application fees, no annual fees, just quick access to up to $250,000. If your business did not receive your approval letter to get up to $250,000, call Main Street Business Loans Approval Desk now. 800-430-4505. 800-430-4505. That's 800-430-4505. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Join us here on the radio waves at 855-450 free. We'll find out about this so-called USA Freedom Act here in a little bit. That's the story that Daryl has to share. Your thoughts are certainly welcome on whatever's on your mind. A lot of people are talking online, at least in our circles, about Chris Cantwell and his indefinite suspension from these very airwaves, which I am not happy about it. I uh, I think Chris is a great talk show host. He has a lot of enthusiasm. He really loves to come here, and uh, he's like uh, one of our go-to guys for filling in, and it was not a choice that I would have liked to have made. Uh, we'll, we'll continue that discussion here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can protect yourself online by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. It is a piece of software that you can download for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux, and it protects you by encrypting your internet connection. So your internet service provider won't know where you're going and what you're doing online anymore as soon as you start using ProXPN. Plus, anybody that might have been trying to sniff your Wi-Fi packets to maybe learn your credit card number or bank account info, you can stop them too because encryption will stop that dead in its tracks. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go grab the software, get started for free right now. And then when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account for unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can connect to, you can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. You can use code FTL50 to get 50% off the price of their annual account, which, by the way, that locks your savings in for the lifetime of your account. So use FTL50 as your code when you get signed up over at ProXPN.com slash FTL. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee and... ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. So, once again, promo code FTL50 at ProXPN.com slash FTL. All right, let's continue with your calls and thoughts. Justin is in North Carolina. Justin, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Daryl, and Mark. Hey, guys. Um, I got to say, I was a little bit surprised to hear about Cantwell. Um, you know, I, I like listening to him on, on your show, but even if I don't always agree with him, but... Uh, I got to say, I really disagree with his choice of language, and I think that you guys act appropriately. Um, you know, a lot of people don't think about the kind of impact that um, words like that have, you know, words that have, in this case, centuries of oppression and hate and violence behind them. Um, but uh, well, that I, wanted to, I would also yeah. point out that uh, not not just what you've you've said because I'm you know I get that, but if an organization like Media Matters got a hold of this, um, they would have Free Talk Live off the air on mo most of its major affiliates within probably a couple of weeks. Uh, you know the the calls would be coming in and uh, you know whatever they yeah. wanted to do at that point because you know they, at that point you have given them everything they need and that's why Free Talk Live had to react in the way that it did. Yeah, nobody wants to hear the explanation. I wanted to hear his right. explanation last night when he told me about it. Um, and, you know, I don't agree with his tactics, but I could understand where he was coming from in what he did there. And I don't think Chris Cantwell is a racist. No, I didn't but, either. But, you know, the average advertiser who hears about this from somebody who's complaining isn't going to care whether Chris Cantwell's Oops, a I guess racist. I'll be advertising on another radio show yeah. or, you know, what some other place. Yep. Yeah, there's a zillion other yeah, shows. You protect your brand. Justin, anything else hey. you want to share? Go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to talk about um, – we had a, a little bit of a fight for liberty here in Lincoln County, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. We had a county commissioner that got all fired up and, and spouted off at the mouth and said that there wasn't going to be any prayers in Lincoln County um, – in Lincoln County public buildings, especially in, at government uh, facilities, except for Christian prayers as long as he had any say over Oh, boy. It. And then he continued by saying that he he didn't want 
any Arab or Muslim to come in and tell him <laughs> what to say and what to do. Well, All it right, sounds so like it's time for on. a lawsuit. Hold on. If there's not going to be any prayers other than Christian prayers, does that mean that there will not be any more prayers to the state? <laughs> you mean like the Pledge of Allegiance? That's yeah, very, that, that, that's a prayer to the state. Yeah. Well, what uh, what I did, because I'm a Muslim and I'm, uh, I'm liberty-minded and I'm in media, I uh, issued some press releases to try to calm people down and keep the lawsuits at bay because— I don't believe that uh, questions of moral uh, issues like this can be answered in uh, litigation or legislation. And um, so what we did is myself, um, some agnostics, atheists, uh, even a couple of pagan priests went in on Monday night to their regular meeting, and we let them have it in as polite a way as we possibly could and told them that um, he had no right to dictate um, what religion is represented for invocations. Now, this is and, just one uh, councilman. I just want to be clear. Right, just one councilman. So they haven't passed any kind of ordinance or anything like that. This is just his opinion. This is what he would want to see happen? Right. All right, probably, you Monday probably can't night, sue they yet. They did then. pass one. What's that? On Monday night, they did pass one. What did they pass? And Well, they passed a policy regarding opening invocations before board meetings. And even though the text of it seems to be exclusive, uh, because it says that um, the invocation, uh, blah, 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 religious leader within the county or leader or appointee of assembly that meets within the county. So a lot of people that are independent worshipers or people that are not part of a religious group or people like myself, Muslims, don't number enough in a concentrated enough area in Lincoln County to form mm. our own mosque. So we go outside the county to establish Yeah, mosques that's interesting. So it is essentially really only allowing the most established of religions to uh, have the invocation at the council meeting. I'd say reach out. Was it the, would it be the ACLU that would want to litigate something like that? Who uh, would be the best? ACLU, uh, I, there's also the ACLU American Humanist down. Association. Uh, there's a couple others that I can't think of off the top of my head. Sorry, Justin, what were you trying to say there? Well, I'm just saying we fixed it. We think we fixed it because in the in the regulation it says um, any assembly that periodically and regularly meets with the count within the county for the purpose of worshiping or discussing their religious perspectives. So what we have done, uh, myself, uh, the Wiccan priest, and a couple other folks, we are in the process of forming an interfaith assembly that will meet regularly, and we'll appoint people to go to these board meetings and open invocations. Okay, and interesting. Well, let us know what happens included. with that. I'm interested to see how they try to bounce you back, like once you send a message to the city council saying, we've got ourselves an assembly and we'd like to have a, you know, our, our crack at doing the invocation and see if they uh, bounce it back in your face and what their excuse is. Oh, they probably will. They'll, oh, they'll come they up will. with something. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Justin, for the call, and good luck with that. Appreciate the uh, the info. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Chris Cantwell is on the line via Skype. Hello, Chris. Good to be with you, gentlemen. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, well, I'm glad to have you in this form, I guess. <laughs> uh, what did you want to share here tonight? So, you know, I just sort of wanted to break down a couple of things. For one, I know a couple of people are calling in talking about freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is a complete nonsense argument. There's a, there's an article up on my website by the title of F the First Amendment, okay? <laughs> I, I don't believe in freedom of speech. It's, it's, a, it's a property rights issue, and, and very clearly I understand that Free Talk Live has— affiliates and advertisers to answer to and i don't uh i want people to understand that you know there's no hard feelings here i was very clear about this on my show radical agenda this evening that this is not uh you know this is not a personal problem this is not a freedom of speech issue this is a business problem right um i understand that there's probably some disagreements with with some of the things that i said but <clears throat> that's fundamentally what this is and i don't want you know people to pull their amps or stop listening to free talk live on on my account but i wanted to uh also just drop the um, you know what what the what the reasoning behind this was is that the person who was addressing me was fundamentally not interested in having a reasonable conversation. People are sort of coming to me and saying, "Well, you know, you use this. This is not an effective debating tactic." Well, clearly, I wasn't trying to engage in a debate. <laughs> right. That's what I but, said earlier. Chris was just you know insulting this guy, and you know he's going to go for the lowest possible blow. 
Right. I'm I'm dismissing this person as utterly useless in a course of a conversation is exactly what I'm doing. He's calling me a sexist, and so I am dismissing him in the worst way possible. And, you know, I'm not surprised. And unfortunately, it was so bad. Hang on. I'll bring it back here in a moment. Uh, it was the worst way possible because now you're off the air, basically, as a co-host of Free Talk Live. And I, for one, enjoyed having you here. Uh, so we'll come back with more here in moments. 855-450-FREE. You can join us here. And we'll come back with more of Chris Cantwell. It's Free Talk Live. Share your thoughts. Has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call one 800 425 4 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Wall & Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Wall & Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall & Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation. Citation for legal services. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live. Join us here on the air, toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Well, Free Talk Live has already lost one Free Talk Live amplifier over uh, asking, telling Chris Cantwell that he is indefinitely suspended Engage. for using the N-word uh, on his Twitter account. And uh, he's actually on the line here. I want to bring him back on in just a moment. But I just saw it. Uh, it was actually, this is the person who pulled their amp, Mark, Ricky. Uh, he posted in our amp forum this, and I think it's the most relevant comment so far. He says, I'll recant my statement on my respect for Mark after listening to him on air. He had said something about losing respect for you. So he's recanting that. Uh, however, he says, I still disagree with the decision. And I think the context doesn't matter argument falls apart when Mark uses the same word on the air. You said it tonight, Mark. And you, while you didn't say it to a black man, as Chris apparently did on Twitter, that doesn't mean that it's any less offensive to the people who would be offended sure it does. when it comes out of your mouth on the radio. No, I mean, people that are looking, look, when somebody reports the usage of a word and you get upset about them reporting the usage, you're looking for something to be upset about. If what, wait, wait, can you run that by me one more time? I reported the someone else using the term, right? Like uh -huh. I, I am nominally, to some extent, a journalist, right? Like I'm mostly a commentator, but we've broken some stories here on Free Talk Live. Certainly Free Talk Live is part of the press. It is a journalist's job to report the truth. Mm -hmm. The truth is that that is what Cantwell said. I simply said what was said. I reported it in the same he, way. He gave an exact quote. Yeah. Yeah, I I made a quote. There if you're if you the listener get upset about me giving an exact quote, consider that you can't handle the real life. Mark, you don't understand then what I was just talking about a few moments ago. People aren't going to pay attention to what Agreed. came before and after that. So all that has to happen is for somebody to clip out that cl it's going to be in our archive tonight. Uh, all they have to do is clip out that clip of you saying, because I dumped it on the radio, but it's going to be in the, the MP3. They clip out the clip of you saying what Cantwell said, and now all of a sudden you said it when somebody calls into Media Matters or whoever they are. Uh, they call the, the advertisers up. Listen to what this guy said. You're advertising on his show. And then you're, you know maybe they'll give you the chance to explain. Every maybe time, they won't. Every time I've had the opportunity to talk to an advertiser, they have given me an opportunity to explain. Sometimes they listen. Sometimes they don't. Go ahead. Chris Cantwell, you're back with us here via Skype. Good to be back, guys. And I, I, I actually, I think that uh, Mark is on point. Is that he's just making a he's making a quote of something, and that's a fundamentally different thing than throwing an epithet at someone. But of course, you know, if he's saying that the context doesn't matter, he's he has thus proven himself incorrect. I'm right? not sure. I mean, I'm saying the context doesn't matter. I'm saying that it is the uh, nuclear option is what the terminology I've used. Ian has said it doesn't matter what comes before or what comes after. I'm just okay. I'm just, I I wish it mattered. I'm just saying there are a lot of people out there to whom it will not matter. Those people, obviously, yeah, there are out there. But, I mean, yeah. you know, that I'd much rather explain my position than Cantwell's. You know, my, my, my position here is fundamentally that the people that I'm having this conversation with are not interested in a conversation, right? I mean, they're coming after me. I've got a two-hour-long show where I'm talking in, in pretty good detail about a particular issue, and this guy's calling me a sexist for talking about this issue, Okay. And so he's coming at me saying, you're a sexist because you made this statement that I disagree with. And I'm going to respond to him with, a, with an utter dismissal, uh, with, a, with a racial epithet. And the reason that I'm doing that is to point out sort of the absurdity of the conversation that we're having. Now, I understand that people are going to react negatively to that. That's sort of my thing, right? I mean, we've got this, there's a video clip on YouTube of me saying, just doing my job, where I'm on Free Talk Live saying, hey, you know, my job is to be in hot water, right? This is this is what I do. I am surprised that it, is, it has worked out for so long with Free Talk Live. As some other caller pointed out, I've been kicked off another of a number of other outlets. I always knew that there was going to come some time when the yeah, heat got Chris, too much. But Chris... When you were kicked off of those other outlets, it was because of your ideas. They were uncomfortable with your ideas. And I'm fine with you coming on here and talking about your ideas. We'll have any conversation on Free Talk Live. At least, you know, I'm not familiar with you getting kicked off of every place you've been kicked off. But at the very least, I know with, with Cop Block. Uh, you know, it wasn't because you used the N word in an insult and in the, in the comments section or something like that. It just seems like a petty reason to, you know, to sort of throw this down, this media relationship, if you will, down the hole. 
Uh, and it's not over necessarily for the in, you know the f- completely foreseeable future. I, I hope that you can come to some level of of an apology for this. But obviously, we can't twist your arm into it because it wouldn't be a real apology if we did. Um, but my point being, you know, why not let your ideas offend people? You love to be offensive, and you're very, very good at it, and that's how you've built your brand. And, you know, as you were pointing out on your podcast today, you're getting more downloads per episode than Free Talk Live gets. Well, uh, downloads on, on YouTube. No, I think you talked about podcast uh, downloads. You don't download from between YouTube. Between the two, between, between podcast downloads and the YouTube videos, I am seeing more downloads per episode than Free Talk Live sees between the two venues. You've okay. built a, a unique brand for yourself by uh, by doing this and I don't, you know, I don't want to position Free Talk Live as the greatest thing or the, or the best media venue or anything like that, but I think you enjoyed your time on Free Talk Live and I think that, you know, they I always enjoy- showed up. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> right. You're very reliable. You're always here and excited and, you know, came with show prep and you you know, you were great. And so it seems like all that just got thrown away not because of your ideas being offensive, but because you said something that just was so offensive to so many people that we couldn't do anything besides take some sort of uh, evasive action. Was well, it worth uh, it? Well, uh, well, here's— I mean, I yes, know you got Anthony yes. Cumia to like you on Twitter or, uh, Twitter or whatever, so it's a personal victory for you. I don't know who that is. But this is the guy Opie, from Opie the Anthony. Opie and Anthony show. Ah, okay. Uh, so, you know, that's good. I'm glad that came out of it for you. But really, are you going to get that mo- uh, that many more donations because of this? Are we going to even get any more donations? We're actually, so far, we're in the negative uh, because of this. And so, you know, I, I feel like everybody's lost on this one, Chris. Well, I'll, uh, here's here's the apology that I will make. I will apologize to Free Talk Live. I will apologize to you, Ian, and to you, Mark, for putting you in this uncomfortable situation. That's something that I uh, will genuinely apologize for because I don't like making your guys' lives difficult. I'm not apologizing to some faceless general. No, I wouldn't ask I have- you. I wouldn't ask you to apologize to the person you were. Uh, arguing with online that doesn't make any sense it's well, just a, a internet troll if you think that the word <laughs> if, if you think the word is in, in, in and of itself offensive then you sort of have to apologize to Ian you, um, you if that's your position then you sort of have to have an apology for using the word right I mean for the very utterance of the word well, no, I think no, that- no, I don't think that I have to have an apology no, for I'm anything. Talking- what I what I'm willing to do is to say that I'm very sorry for putting you gentlemen in this position because you've been very good to me and I don't yeah. feel comfortable making your lives any more difficult. I am not fundamentally sorry about what I said or who I said it to because I'm issuing a harsh dismissal of a person who's fundamentally not interested in having a serious conversation. Listen to me. My entire complaint with all of these social justice warriors is that they are not having a serious conversation. What they are treating it like is that when I say something about a particular demographic issue, that that this is inherently a racist and sexist and terrible thing of me to say. And that's completely ridiculous. I'm talking about very real stuff, and people are dismissing it as racist and sexist. So if that's the way that you perceive me for trying to address an issue where I'm willing to talk about it for two hours straight and take calls that anybody can bring up any contrary point that they like, where I have an open forum on my website that anybody can comment, if these people were just going to dismiss me with stupid little words like racist, sexist, and bigot, well, then let's just have our, let's just communicate that way. I'll just call you an N-word, and you can just call me a racist, and that's really the conversation that we're having. And I think that's eminently reasonable, frankly. But right, I so, understand that it makes things very difficult for you guys, and for that, I am regretful. So, Chris, I, I just want to, I, I guess, play devil's advocate here for a second. I can understand the first usage in, like, a heat-of-the-moment sort of thing. But what about the second and third usage of the N-word on Twitter that you had? Well, because people are upset about it. So why would I stop upsetting them? I mean, I said something <laughs> to upset people. Why don't I just keep upsetting them, right? I mean, Right. I you're using is- it for the sake of using it because it's upsetting people. And it just seems like a high price to pay. Obviously, you're willing to pay it. Uh, but it seems like a high price to pay. I, I felt like this was a good platform for you, Chris. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I mean, you know, what he's what he's showing himself to be is, is an internet phenomenon, right? Yeah. And that's uh, no doubt about it. But, you know, internet phenomenons aren't necessarily cut out for radio if that's going to be the, the, the way Chris it goes. I think Chris Cantwell is totally cut out, cut out for radio, except he made a, you know, kind of a 
bad choice in this particular case. I mean, you could have used the C word on this guy and it would have been no big deal, right? Like there, almost any other insult you could have thrown out at this guy and it would have just breezed right past it. Oh, that's just Cantwell being Cantwell. Uh, but this time, you know, something had to be done. And I'm sorry that I had to do it. I wish I didn't. Um, and I and I wish, you know, I don't know. What else can we do? That's it. There's, it. Nothing, there's, there's nothing to do. I mean, look, let see the thing blow over and we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you after the show. Good night. <laughs> All right. More coming up here in moments. It's free Talk Live. 855-450 free. That's the toll free number here. The USA Freedom Act. We'll talk about that on the way. Plus your calls and thoughts. we got people on the line who don't want to talk about Cantwell. But you can still talk about him, too, if you want. 855-450 free. Hour two's on the way. This is Free Talk Live. Well, I did it. I finally left the empire behind. And now that I'm safely settled in Chile, I'm gathering with others like me to build a new community called Fort Galt. Fort Galt is designed to be the ideal home base for professionals and their families to live and work in peace. If you're ready to ditch the super state and bring your business to freer lands, visit us online at fortgalt.com. That's fortgalt.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at survivormax.com. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, May 20th, 2015. Silver is trading at $17.15 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,210 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $235. Antiwar.com reports after the Saudi government announced the end of their humanitarian truce on Yemen on Sunday night, a series of airstrikes were almost immediately reported across the south, centering on Aden. Overnight, the strikes began hitting the capital city of Sana'a again in earnest, and locals are reporting that the city is under the heaviest number of strikes since before the truce. Casualties so far are unclear, but there is a new civilian exodus out of the city as strikes centered around Yemeni military weapons depots. That's been the case with past Saudi strikes on Sana'a as well, with hilltop missile depots being hit in the strikes and setting up a series of explosions that tear through the residential neighborhoods below. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numeri supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the FANS program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. 
UPI reports the Supreme Court ruled on Monday that Maryland's income tax law allowing the state to double tax residents who pay income tax in a different state where they work is unconstitutional. The court ruled with a divided 5-4 to four vote on Monday to uphold the Maryland Court of Appeals 2013 ruling that said that the tax law wrongly exposes Maryland residents to double taxation because it does not provide full tax credit for residents who also pay income taxes where they work. In most states with an income tax, people are taxed both where they work and where they live, but they receive a full income tax credit for out-of-state earnings. Justice Samuel Alito, who wrote the court's opinion, said the Maryland tax law forced some residents to pay income tax to more than one jurisdiction. North Carolina and Wisconsin, as well as the cities of New York City, Philadelphia, Cleveland, Detroit, Michigan, St. Louis, Missouri, Kansas City, and Wilmington, Delaware, could also be affected by the ruling. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the Los Angeles City Council voted on Tuesday to increase the minimum wage in the nation's second largest city to $15 per hour by 2020 from the current rate of $9 an hour in what is being called a victory for labor and community groups that have pushed for similar pay hikes in several municipalities. The City Council's 14 to 1 vote on the measure, which must come back before the panel for final approval, would require businesses with more than 25 employees to meet the $15 per hour pay level by 2020 while smaller businesses would have an extra year to comply. Officials said the plan, which comes on the hills of similar minimum wage hikes in other major cities like Seattle and San Francisco, would increase pay for an estimated 800,000 workers in the city. City Councilman Curran Price Jr., one of the main backers of the proposal, said before the vote, We are embarking upon, I think, the most progressive minimum wage policy anywhere in the country. The proposal was given preliminary approval in Los Angeles, where housing costs are among the highest in the nation and is said to represent a far-reaching victory for supporters of higher pay for low-wage workers. The 67% pay increase would be implemented gradually starting at $10.50 per hour for larger employers in 2016 and gradually go up each year until it reaches $15 in 2020. Companies with 25 or fewer workers would follow a slightly slower stepped-up increase in minimum wage pay. Opponents of minimum wage hikes say they place an undue burden on businesses and would force employers to lay off workers or move. Other cities have also moved to increase their minimum wage in phases. Seattle is facing in a pay hike that would bring the minimum wage to $15 an hour over the next two to six years, depending on the size of the business. Voters in San Francisco have approved raising the minimum wage to $15 per hour by 2018. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Shortly after being fired from his coding position at a downsizing tech firm, 34-year-old Irvine native Sam Morrison told Reporters Monday that he believed he had finally achieved the sort of work-life balance for which he has long strived. Yeah, ever since I got fired, it just seems like my whole entire routine is just clicking. I go for jogs in the afternoon, spend nights with my wife and kid, I'm even cooking more. Everything just feels right. Morrison, who since his termination has found time to pick up reading again, eat a healthy diet, and sleep more than five hours a night, noted that his unemployment has allowed him to find a level of harmony in his personal life that he never before thought possible. For a while there, I thought that I was going to spend the rest of my life constantly worrying about getting to the office on time and pleasing my boss. Outside of the late payments on the house, the mounting credit card debt, the rapidly depleting savings, my life is essentially stress-free. I honestly couldn't be happier. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You may join us here toll-free, 855-450-FREE is our number. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Skype on in here at username lrn.fm. We're going to talk about the 
USA Freedom Act, as it is being proposed. Daryl's got a story about that, and uh, as I suspect, it likely won't have anything to do with increasing freedom in the United States. That's just my prediction. I, just, just like uh, the, uh, you know, everybody should get a puppy act has nothing to do with everybody actually getting a puppy. Is there an everybody gets a puppy act? It doesn't. No, but like if it. there was, it would uh, have absolutely nothing to do with everybody getting a puppy. All right, let's uh, go first, though, to your calls and thoughts. And then I know, Mark, you had a, a little bit more you wanted to say about the Chris Cantwell uh, controversy here, which, why, by the way, if you're just now tuning in, we spent the whole first hour on. So if you want to hear all that, go and grab the archive later at freetalklive.com. Uh, but let's go first to Cameron. He's in Boston. You're on Free Talk Live. Cameron. Hi, guys. Um, I wrote this poem a couple of days ago. I wonder if I could actually tell you guys about it. You wrote a poem. You want to read it or tell us about the poem? I kind of want to read it because it really has just something that I think you guys really do represent. Is it short? Pretty much. Okay. How many lines? Twelve. All right. Let's hear it. All right. The poem is called When Darkness Falls. When darkness falls, so does man. Truth should be free across the land. A new light is beaming across the sky, bringing the fall of the man and his lies. What happens when the guilty are set free, taking justice from you and me? The light knows the truth and brings justice to the land. Freedom is set free after the fall of man. The only problem is the new light can't fly. So we're stuck in the darkness with the man and his lies. All right, I don't get it. What's it mean? <laughs> What's it mean? See, see, the darkness is basically what America is now and what the American citizens are stuck in. We're literally stuck in the dark. While the new light would really, it would bring across the idea of all the American citizens actually know what's going on in the world. Know well, that's that never going to happen. I mean, one thing you can count on is that all of everybody isn't going to know anything about anything, right? Like, there's people are going to be ignorant forever. There's just the, the idea that uh, there will be some sort of enlightening moment when uh, everybody's been woken up to something. It's just highly unlikely, don't like, you think? Even during the period of history that they called the Enlightenment, mm -hmm. it was really only a small percentage of people that were actually being enlightened. I suppose that's true. Cameron, though, I mean, I'm glad you're writing poetry. It's good. I think that, uh, you know, the liberty movement needs more uh, creativity like that. So Poetry's kind of lost its thing, though. I mean, you know, the turn of the 20th century, it was a yeah. big deal to be a poet. I mean, those were the, in, in many ways, the, the newsmen of their day. And um, for whatever reason, America doesn't seem to be into poetry like it was. Do you think poets had groupies back in the day? Oh, I'm sure they do. Yeah. 100%. Cameron, thanks for the call tonight, man. I appreciate it. Let's talk to Chris. He's in Connecticut, or as he says, the police state of Connecticut. Chris, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. I, I want to discuss ignorant people right now. Um, earlier this week, there was a despicable chess move made by the teleprompter-in-chief, also known as uh, Barack Obama, whereby he made some, he read some claim from his teleprompter that uh, he's going to stop issuing uh, military weapons to the police. Except oh, yeah. for in all of the circumstances in which they're still going to be able to get the military weapons. Which is all the circumstances. Yeah. <laughs> it was complete legal spe lawyer speak anyway, but speaking of the ignorant masses believing it, I mean, this is this is a guy who read one time that uh, he wanted a domestic force of the size and scope of the military on American soil. That's to right. Well-funded and equipped, yep. And um, to boot, all this stuff has already been handed out billions of rounds, hundreds of thousands of machine guns, like real machine guns, and thousands probably of military uh, vehicles at this point in the hands of these local Gestapo forces. So this is basically a very despicable person hopping in front of a parade and, and just jumping right in front of it, the parade being, oh, we got to demilitarize the police now. People are starting to wake up to it a little bit. But then his sheep... Like, a guy I work with today come up to me like, oh, did you hear what the president did? I'm like, just smack mm -hmm. myself in the head. Go yeah, well, the headlines thing, you know? the, the headlines of this particular story made it sound like, yeah, that's the end of the military supplies going yeah. to the police. And then you read the story, and the very last sentence is, 
except in situations that are going to be a little bit more, have a little more oversight, in which they'll still be allowed to get grenade launchers and bearcats and armored tanks and all of these other horrible things Wasn't to use on people. Well, wasn't there something like, okay, they're going to stop giving them tanks with treads, but they can still have tanks, tanks with, with tires, wheels, yeah. right? <laughs> right, but you know, like under bearcat. certain circumstances, I think they will still be allowed to get the ones with treads. You're probably right about that. Yeah, There, there just has but to be a little bit more oversight. It speaks to your point about a lack of any kind of 100% enlightenment ever possible. People just Wall this stuff up like lambs to the slaughter. And, and uh, did, did you select few moving to New Hampshire to do their thing and, and take back a local zone for any semblance of freedom? Chris, did you catch the other part of that speech where he is going to he is going to you know air quote give body cameras to all of the police officers everywhere like they're they're all gonna have them. I, I think that, that so he's going he's gonna to take our money that he takes from our paychecks and, and give it to the government some more, mm-hmm. and then they can buy cameras. Right, and, you know, it, it's things like... when they want to be somebody anyway. It, it's things like this that make me skeptical of the body cameras that maybe it's not about accountability, it's about mass surveillance. Because when you mass have every police officer and, wearing a body camera... You know, essentially, you're going to have 24 hours a day of unwarranted surveillance that somebody somewhere is going to be collecting and looking at. And then, oh, wait a second. Did that guy jaywalk? All right. So we need to facial recognition on this. Send a ticket to his house. Yeah, I have. I do understand the concerns about the police having body cameras will do to some extent hurt average people because it'll gar- help gather evidence against them for various different things. But all that said, we know that the cops don't even need this evidence most of the time because it's just their say-so that's good enough in court. So will it really do that much to bring extra convictions? I'm not sure. I think what it will do is it will clear up discrepancies and disputes. Like if somebody says, you know, the cops did X and then the cops actually didn't do X, the camera will prove that. Uh, similarly, if we're saying that the cops did something and they're saying they didn't, then the cameras will help with that too. So I think it's a double-edged sword, but I think that overall the benefits outweigh the the negatives. Of right. I, I just think cops. that there's not enough people looking at the mass surveillance part of the body cameras. Chris, anything else you want to share tonight? Oh, no, I guess that's about it. With, with exception to what, what Daryl just said, the mass surveillance will come either way. If it's on a cop's chest or not, we'll have our own drone minders one day, one per person, the way it's going now. Right, uh, but, a, you know. A camera well, in every pot. A well, when you say in every pot. Well, when you say, you know, like, put cameras on street corners, people get upset. When you say, you know, fly surveillance drones, people get upset. But when you say put cameras on all of the police officers so that they can record during their entire shift, nobody cares. Yeah, thanks. pretty slick. I didn't think about that one, Daryl. So thanks for pointing that out, and you guys keep doing what you're doing. Chris, I appreciate it. Thanks for the call. 855 free Yeah, but a lot of the cops, I guess it would just depend, right? So, like, if you think about uh, cops on a beat in New York City, there's probably a lot of cops on, on, their, on feet, you know, walking around, in which case – that mass surveillance thing would come into play there. But in a city like Keene, New Hampshire, and a lot I of places... I see cops walking around all the they time. They do walk like around, they but for the most part... driving around Keene all day. in their cars for a lot of the day. So a lot of that footage is going to be the cop camera looking at the car. You know, it's not going to really capture anything useful. And police have had dash cams in a lot of places. Not in Keene. They don't actually have them in Keene, but in a lot of places they have them. I think, I think the uh, state troopers have them in New Hampshire. Um, so that's nothing new, right, to have the police have dash cams and things like that. And having the police having dash cams hasn't really done a whole lot to create uh, sort of the, the mother grid of, uh, I guess, oppression. Right. But one thing that helps in New Hampshire is that they don't have the license plate readers like they have around the country. They tried to get them and the New Hampshire state reps knocked it down. Yep. They kicked that thing back in their face. And that's one of the reasons why I'm not so concerned here in New Hampshire. We've got people moving here for the Free State Project. that's going to help shore up having more peaceful cops rather than a militarized force. We're coming up on Free Talk Live. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? 
The answer is I-N-C, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 you can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. We are back with more Free Talk Live. You're invited to join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Skype in at Skype username lrn.fm with you in studio ian here daryl and mark and mark tell me about fort galt fort galt is a project that they're they're starting down in chile and the idea is to create this sort of one-of-a-kind condominium complex uh you, you go you have to go see the videos to really understand what i'm saying i'm just trying to give you an idea these are sort of really small units meant mostly for just sleeping in and there's all kinds of uh open space uh space where people can collaborate. The idea is to get um, entrepreneurs 
you know, the artistic folks and, uh, you know, just a variety of different kind of people, small business owners, freelancers, young professionals, get them all together in a place where they can collaborate and, um, you know, come up with new and different ideas. And I think it's very interesting. So if this, if you find this interesting, please go check out what they're doing over there at FortGalt.com. They have some very small, very, very affordable units, um, as low as $10,000 a unit. So go check it out. It's FortGalt.com. And they've got high-end, well-produced videos, um, a, a well-done website. You're not going to be disappointed in what you see. FortGalt.com. It's spelled F-O-R-T, as in Fort, and Galt, as in John Galt, G-A-L-T. FortGalt.com. All right, let's go and continue with your calls and thoughts here. We got Brett in Des Moines on Skype. Hello, Brett. Yo. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize. I don't have any uh, poetry to read for you or anything like that. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> um, anyway, I just want to chime in on the whole Chris Cantwell thing. Um, you know, I I realize this is probably a purely emotional response on my part, um, but I grew up, you know, with a lot of it, basically in a, in a very diverse community. A lot of my friends were black. I have witnessed firsthand, you know, the things that that they have gone through and that they they continue to go through. And I, I just feel like that word has no place being used. I do respect his right to say it. That's I, you know, if he wants to use that word, great, go for it. But you know, it, your your Mark's decision, or I I don't know if it was purely Mark's decision or what, but you know, this the the decision to suspend him from the show, I, I agree with. If not anything else, than a purely business standpoint. I mean, I, I, again, I'm I'm basically repeating what Mark said earlier, but you know the the one you know one uh, blog or one you know media outlet gets a hold of that and you know you s free talk live can start losing advertisers start losing affiliates and uh i i kind of jumped into the show uh in the middle of the whole conversation so i don't know exactly where you stand on it ian but i mean free talk live is essentially your baby i don't know why you'd it it kind of sounded like you were sort of defending him and i i feel like that's I don't know you what know. I said that made you feel I was defending Chris. I I made it. Pr I thought I made it clear I don't support what he said. Um, at the same time, I you know I would love to have him back on the air because he's a talented guy, and I'm sad that uh, that I had to make the choice that I made. I I'm not, I don't I don't relish making this choice, and I don't appreciate being put into the position where I had to to make that choice. And that's one of the reasons why he apologized because he did put me into this. Uh, position, but he hasn't apologized for what he said, which I didn't ask him to do. Um, but on the further, what I would say is that if he is apologizing to us for putting us in this position, then I would like to know, and I will ask him tonight uh, off the air when he comes here, uh, because we're going to hang out tonight like we've been doing every night for quite a while now. <laughs> we've been sort of guarding the flag, the peace flag yeah, on, about the, all that. <laughs> on the front porch. And so, you know, he's still my friend. I still love Chris Cantwell, and I still intend to associate with him. But it's he's a difficult friend to have, and sometimes, you know, he puts people in uncomfortable positions. And what I'd like to hear from Chris is that he wouldn't do it again in the future. Because if he's truly sorry that he put us, Mark and I, into this position where we had to make this choice, uh, then he should presumably not want to put us in that position again but but that's that's the thing it, i i feel like that's his whole his his shtick that's you know yeah it, like he he gets off on on offending people and it's more of a to me it's it it shows and, and again i'm not i look i like chris i i think he's a great personality on the radio i've you know i'm, I'm a fan that's it's all good and I, and I don't think he's actually racist i you know i'm not saying that but it it almost seems like a <clears throat> It it shows a level of of no offense, but like immaturity, like a four chan, you know, like somebody going on four chan and just typing offensive things just to be offensive. And it's like you're not that that doesn't contribute anything. There's no you're not. Yeah, I'm with not, you there. And that's I don't why think I, he does it for that reason. Uh, Cam oh, well I think is he a, does. Is a marketing genius. <laughs> um, and he has created. He you know, basically admitted doing it for that reason when Daryl cornered him on it he, a few moments ago. Right. The, the the guy is you know his his goal is to create an internet uh, uh, you know monolith here. His goal is to put out a bunch of clickbait and get people to go to his website to read the things that he says. 
and he's and, successful in that. But you know, he is also and just, clickbait. In my opinion, is very immature. Well, and he relishes in offending people, and that's why he did post the word multiple times, as he essentially admitted. Uh, you know, so don't pretend like that's not true about Chris. He certainly does relish that. And uh, and I feel like he should be more offensive with his ideas rather than uh, than you know the select words like that. I think that you know you can be as offensive by sharing you know some of these ideas in the way that he does, and that's I think that's why I think that's why he's truly great. Not because he can ba- banter around with uh, some offensive words, but because he has a way of sort of the classic libertarian macho flash uh, that you know is very entertaining, and people want to pay attention inter- to that. It's entertaining. But at the same time, I, I just feel like it works against what we're trying to do. You know, yeah, I mean, you can, again, I, I respect. Well, it well that's not what he's trying to do. He, what he's trying to do is uh, shore up the libertarian base. He wants to take the libertarians out there and mold them into what he believes is the right philosophy. He, what Free Talk Live is doing is something different. Free Talk Live is trying to go out and get people and convert them to the ideas, of, explain to them that the ideas of liberty really are for them and their philosophies already, that they actually really do believe mostly in the ideas of liberty and to bring them along a little way, um, you know, in some ways or another. For us, eh, you know, whatever you believe, as long as it's free and voluntary, that's fine by us. We don't, you know, we don't judge you based on that. But whereas Cantwell wants, you know, this is the libertarian philosophy. You'll believe it my way. And that's what he's trying to do to some extent. Well, this came into conflict here is what happened. Yeah, I guess all I'm saying is that, it, you know, it, it, as much as people want to deny it, racism still exists to this. Day. I mean, you could, you know, there are, you can look at, you know, any 20 something white girl and, you know, in the suburbs and she'll jam out to Lil Wayne all day. But, you know, as soon as a black person gets on the elevator with her, she'll still clutch her purse, you know, close to her. I mean, it, you know, that's that's a fact that we yeah, have. It to does realize. still exist. And you know, certainly using words like uh, the N word don't help it go away. Right. It right. continues to and, divide. But, uh, but yeah. the, one of the problems here is, is and can't well pointed it out, is, is, look, it's not like I'm the only person who uses this word. Um, and the, one of the difficulties I find with the N word is, is that, look, if black people are going to if some black people are going to use the N word, then those same black people shouldn't have a problem when a white person does it, because that's just full on bigotry. Brett, well, thanks. It, it, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I just I wanted to kind of counterpoint that it, it that entirely depends on the context. I mean, you it, you know, if you're singing along to a hip hop record or something, and that word is in there, yep. Versus it does, the way that Chris yeah, used no it. doubt. I mean, Thanks, man. That. Appreciate it. More coming up on Free Talk Live. It's time to build your own emergency food stockpile with the industry leader, My Patriot Supply. Once you try them, you'll know why so many Americans like you have made them part of their emergency preparedness plan. Experience the My Patriot Supply difference today with this unbelievable offer. Right now, a four-week food supply is only $99, and that includes free shipping. That's 50% off the online price. Call 800-274-3070 to claim yours. Limit two per caller while supplies last. This offer isn't available online, so you want to make sure and grab this opportunity to get prepared today. 800-274-3070 to get your four-week food supply for the incredible price of only $99, and it'll be shipped to you completely free. Call 800-274-3070 right now. That's 800-274-3070 to claim yours while supplies last. Don't wait. Call today. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Radio is the most personal of mediums. 
I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Join us here on the radio, 855-450-FREE. We still have to talk about the so-called USA Freedom Act coming up. 855-450-3733 is our toll-free number. We've got Skype as well. You can Skype into the show here at username lrn.fm. With you in studio, Ian. Daryl. And Mark. And ExpressCoin.com is the best choice for getting your cryptocurrency. Whether it's Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, ExpressCoin has them. And they got plenty of them. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They are a licensed money services business, and you can get your cryptocurrency with money order or check. Just get started over at ExpressCoin.com. It doesn't matter if you're in the U.S. or Canada. ExpressCoin.com is where you can go. Plus, you can grab their smartphone app. Also at ExpressCoin.com, use coupon code FTL, and you'll get up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no fee whatsoever. No transfer fee with coupon code FTL at ExpressCoin.com. So you've been waiting to get some Bitcoin? Don't wait any longer. Just go and grab some at ExpressCoin.com. As we continue with your calls and thoughts, we've got Laura on the line in Victoria, Canada, via Skype. Hello, Laura. Hey. Hey, you're on the air. Okay, so I like to talk about the Christopher Cantwell situation. Okay, I'm getting so sick of these pro blacks getting upset. Okay, by the way, I'm a black female. I'm getting sick of these pro blacks getting upset when you call them a nigger. Okay. But I'm gonna have to. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna have to dump you on that. Uh, I just don't feel comfortable letting that word on the air, so I apologize. But, uh, but go ahead. Oh, okay. Okay, I won't say it again. Yeah, thank you. Um. <laughs> uh. It's not fair when they when they're called that word, but they are allowed to call you an inferior white boy or cracker or white trash. It is hypocritical. It is treating black people like children in the sense that they are not allowed any personal responsibility for their actions. And quite frankly, I think pro black are probably one of the most bigoted races out there. Now, what are you, I, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not able to make out what you're saying. Are you saying poor blacks? What is the word pro you're saying? Black. No, pro blacks. Pro blacks. So, yes. Um, people among the pro black movement, like um, the uh, Black Panthers, or a lot of people who are doing the whole Black Lives Matter sort of uh, protest. Okay. I, I don't know if everybody that's doing the Black Lives Matter thing is, I said, or I, I, I don't think that they're black supremacists. Pardon? 
I said, I don't it, think that everybody that's using the hashtag Black Lives Matters, I, I don't think that they're all black supremacists. Is there a difference between said, pro-black I and never, black supremacist? Yeah, yes. I never said that all. Like the, the, I said a lot. Okay, because you had mentioned the Black Panthers, and they're definitely a black supremacist organization. Yeah. Well, um, one of the th- so one thing that I think is bears uh, mentioning here is the uh, the the person with whom uh, Cantwell was sort of arguing on, with on the internet. He didn't say anything racial until after Cantwell did. So he responded no, in kind. No. No, he said, "Shut your mouth, you inferior white boy." After he, after, after Cantwell had had used the N word. No, he then said, "Shut up, the N word." No, oh, that's not what uh, what I had seen earlier today. But I guess we'll have to double check. I, that. I've seen the screenshots, and I was reading this other guy's uh, Twitter page, and he was making post about. Uh, Allegedly, the website, the Free Thought Project, had posted something he didn't like, and he wanted them to defend a position that he thought was racist, but he did not use the term white boy or cracker until after Chris used the N-word. Like, that's the timeline. Now, he did call Cantwell a sexist and things like that well, early on. Right. But I'd like to say that, you know, regardless of which order it was— I do agree where with you know where Laura's coming from. There is definitely hypocrisy on this. Had Cantwell called somebody a cracker or whatever, uh, or a stupid cracker or something like that, that wouldn't be something to where you know I would suspend him from the airwaves for it. So there's definitely inconsistency there. There's no doubt about it. But at the but same time, but I don't time, know anybody that considers the word cracker to be a slang, see, like you thing. know racially yeah. charged term. This I hear the, the word point. cracker and I laugh. Me too. Yeah. See, this is the point I'm trying to make. Instead of black people getting so offended with the N word, why can't they just be like white people when they hear the word cracker? Laugh and be like, whatever, I don't care. Well, I imagine there are some black people who don't care, right? Yeah, Uh, like me. (laughs) uh, Right. But on the other hand, uh, I mean, how many times have white people been lynched uh, being called cracker at the same time? I mean, the word, the N word has a lot of real nasty connotation and sort of history surrounding it. There's no doubt that there's more charge, if you will, surrounding the use of that word. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, but when when are we going to get over it? When the hell That's a good go? question. I, I, yeah, I, this is the thing is, is that to some extent, um, it, it seems like, you know, if you're going to let people start on a clean slate or you're not, and if, if you don't want to let people start on a clean slate, then we're never going to, there's never going to be any healing. Um, I, I, I will point out, Ian, though, that there have, there's this website that goes out and sort of collects the, uh, the news stories that don't really hit the news of white people hurt by black people for what they consider racially charged reasons. And so, I mean, you know, I don't know. Sure. How many of them have uh, had crosses burned in their front yard? Cross- Nope, not How many crosses of them burned. have, you know, been uh, hung from trees? I don't think it matters if you've gotten uh, beaten I wasn't or hung killed. from a tree. Neither were my ancestors. I and my family generation come from Nigeria. Actually, my mom's side of the family owned slaves, so this doesn't apply to me. It's true. Blacks own slaves, too. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I totally understand where you're coming from, and I can empathize with it, and I agree with you. You know, I wish that racism could be over tomorrow. But I don't feel that using the N-word in any kind of context is contributing towards ending racism. You know, I think that that's driving people uh, apart in the same way that, you know, calling uh, using racial epithets towards uh, Hispanics or Jews or whatever uh, is also not helping at all. I think I would like to. That you know, it's it's unlikely that you like. Too, there's not too many racial uh, comments that could have been that he would have said on the air. That like, I think that the N word is special in our um, call. I'm not defending that. I'm saying that it is. I'm, You're just I'm only, observing. I'm it. just observing that it is special because if he would have used some other racially charged word. Uh, for some other group of people, then maybe it wouldn't have mattered. Do you get what I'm saying? If it would have been Mr. Rodriguez and he called him a wetback or something like that, um, then that might have been a different story. Like, do you do you get how there's this specialness around the N word? To a degree, but then again, like it doesn't. I've learned, I've taught myself for it to not bother me, because yeah. I cannot. 
be upset over what. It you is, can't fix stupid. I mean, and that's generally what you're dealing with when somebody's using that term. Well, no, it's just, well, yeah, but it's just kind of like, well, you call me the N-word, who cares? I'm going to keep going on with my day. I've been, I've been walking down the street, because I'm originally from London, England, and I've been walking down the street, and then a chat or a cockney will call me a packy. I'm like, I'm, I'm not Indian, I'm black. I don't care. I'm going <laughs> to keep doing my thing. <laughs> so packy is what, short for Pakistani? Pakistani, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Anything else you want to share tonight, Laura? Um, no, not really. Just I just hope that the black race just moves past the whole child and victim complex mentality and we can become a prosperous and an empowered race and not just um, fabulous people. Well, I hope the human race moves past the idea of race and just, you know, stops looking at people's color, and then we never hear a single racial epithet again. But unfortunately, uh, you I know, think that's probably not going to happen sadly. anytime yeah. soon. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, I Laura. Appreciate I really the call. appreciate the call. I appreciate the perspective tonight. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-453. By the way, I did get confirmation from Chris Cantwell. He says that I confirm I went to race before he did, uh, before the person he was yeah. arguing with online so you know you're scraping the bottom of the barrel with this and chris can come up with more creative insults he's a creative brilliant you know really smart guy who's funny at the same time and he just you know he let himself scrape the bottom of the barrel here and unfortunately there were consequences for it uh 855 450 free is the toll free number here you can share your thoughts i'm by no means delighted about this or reveling in it or anything like that i'm sad and upset yeah no doubt about it uh so i think we, we've lost one of our best co-hosts as yeah. a result of this uh and mark i know you had something you wanted to address about uh, our conversation earlier today we'll get into that here in a moment plus the usa freedom act You've helped make Lumber Liquidators North America's largest specialty retailer of hardwood flooring. To say thanks, we've made unbelievable price cuts on top quality floors at our customer appreciation sale. It's your chance to get pre-finished hardwood for just 99 cents. And Strand Bamboo, our most durable bamboo from an incredible 149 Plus deals on 400 beautiful floors, including quality laminate from 49 cents and 24 months special financing. You trust our value, we value your trust. So get to the customer appreciation sale today. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Right now, it's looking like tonight's record $500 million Powerball drawing could be cancelled as embarrassed lottery officials have admitted they lost the balls. Douglas Bronstein, deputy director of the Multi-State Lottery Association, addressed the press a moment ago. Uh, we have a quote. Uh, we know how important the balls are to a successful drawing. I saw them the other day and I'm sure they'll uh, turn up somewhere. Bronstein says it's usually marketing director Ben Callahan's job to keep an eye on the balls. But when reached for comment, Callahan said he just sits next to the balls. It's not his 
his job to know where they are every second of every day. According to Bronstein, it's crucial they find the balls before tonight's drawing. Quote, we'd love to use different balls, but these ones have the numbers on them. Bronstein added that once they figure out where the balls are, they promise to keep them in some sort of case instead of just lying around the office. When we return, we'll meet some of the undeterred Powerball superfans who are camping out before the big drawing dressed as the favorite numbers. This is the Onion News Network. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial in toll-free. Join us here on the airwaves. 855-450-FREE is the number. 855-450-3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com. With you tonight in studio, Ian here. Daryl. And Mark. Daryl W. Perry is with us. He is here courtesy of his website, which is fpp.cc. One of two, uh, or a few different sites, but uh, two major ones. fpp.cc, also fppradio.com. The FPP.cc side is more of like the print side of you. Yes. And then the FPPradio.com is all audio. In fact, you do three different shows yes. uh, per week, but that sounds smaller than it is. You're actually doing 11 I'm doing 11 shows episodes. per week. Yeah, you're doing 11 episodes of three different programs yes. uh, per week. You're doing seven days a week a newscast, the yes. FPP Radio News, which is a tremendous level of dedication, uh, and you do a great job with it. And then there's also uh, Peace, Love, Liberty Radio, thrice weekly. That's a half-hour-long program. Yes. And then also a five-minute kind of opinion piece. Uh, commentary slash news that yeah. comes out on Sundays. That's the oldest of the three shows. Mm -hmm. That one is coming up on four years in August. Wow, congrats. Uh, the Peace, Love, Liberty Radio, I think, is coming up on three years sometime this fall. Hmm. And the FPP Radio News is a little over a year. So you started doing the Freedom Minute before you moved to New Hampshire. Yes, I okay. was living in Texas, and I actually started it, I think, a week and a half or two weeks before my permanent headache began. Oh, my. Well, yes. go and get the latest on Daryl and what he's doing over at FPP.cc and FPPradio.com. As we continue here, you can share your thoughts on the Chris Cantwell controversy, which has uh, sort of enveloped the majority of the show thus far. And we just um, we were just talking with a, a black lady from Canada who had some, you know, I thought interesting opinions about this. If you missed it, you can always go grab the archives over at freetalklive.com. But Mark, uh, you had called me this morning about this, and I was sleeping late. And weren't you up late though, right? Yeah, I was up late hanging out with Chris Cantwell uh, on the the front guarding porch. the flag, right? And uh, so you had presented to me that you were pretty upset. You were willing to not be on the show tonight. If I was going to have Chris Cantwell on Free Talk Live, you were not going to be here. And you wanted to explain that, right? I, well, I wasn't. I, I don't know about upset. Um, I was as just a. You were serious. Okay, Seri how about serious, that? Serious is a good way to describe it. Uh, I'm just as upset. The, you know, I, you know, sad that uh, Cantwell's. You know, at this point, it doesn't look like he's going willing to uh, play by the rules and uh, come back on Free Talk Live. I'd like him to do that. 
But um, what I decided to do is just look, I can't come to you. Uh, when, when you and I disagree, Ian, you tend not to bend. <laughs> right? Like, that's just True. not how you go about things. So if I'm serious on something, I have to be willing to take a very strong stand. Mm -hmm. I have tried to take this stand in the past and failed, and I need to, you know, I need to look within and say, are you willing to quit the show over this, Mark? Because that's ultimately what it comes down to, is, is if I'm going to change something programmatically on Free Talk Live, I have to be willing to quit the show to do it. Because... It's not program programmatics are not my job on Free Talk Live. I do ad sales. You are the program director. You decide what goes on the air and what doesn't. I can say what I say, but all I can do is complain essentially if I don't like something. So I decided I'm going to need to uh, take a look at this. I went and you know compiled a few experts, asked them what they thought about this and what their opinions were, how they would handle it. Yep. I told them, look. You are now the program. You are now the general manager of Free Talk Live. I've just made you that. And I have this problem, and I explained it to him that uh, can't well use the N word on uh, Black Eye on Twitter. And I need to know, uh, I need you to ask me questions in order to answer, uh, answer for yourself what you're going to do about it. They and, didn't have to think very long, did they? Um, well, I can tell you, Walt Sabo, who is our uh, you know big, uh, probably our biggest uh, um, guy, he asked a lot of questions. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, before his answer was fire his ass. Don't tell him why. You don't have to say anything. Fire him. Never say anything. Like like he was unequivocal. Wow. But if this went public, if this was a public display, it's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, others were equivocated a bit more but that was you know that was the position so these are the things that i learned i went to three consultants and talked to some other people and stuff like that i think i got six total opinions yeah i then came to you and i said you know like i think that the first things that we said is, is like you're like oh we'll talk about it tonight and i'm like no we won't because if Cantwell's going to be on the show, I'm not. Because I knew I had to take this stand. If Yeah, I had intended to bring him on the air and talk about this issue, you know. And uh, to me, it was just another controversial thing that Cantwell did. And he's welcome. Uh, and he, he was welcome to call in, and he got his his say on that. Yeah. It's just that the the problem with that is is that Free Talk Live doesn't take the strong stand it needs to on this particular issue, mm -hmm. and it then can come back and bite us whenever anybody who wants us to wants to come back and bite us uh, feels like. And you know the yeah. But when you said you were willing to not come on the show, I thought okay, Mark's pretty serious about this. So um, then I rattled off the uh, responses of these experts, which you're more likely to listen to than me. And um, once you'd heard that, <laughs> that was that. Okay, so there you go. Um, you've explained yourself. Anything yeah. else? That was what I wanted uh, to get out there is, is that, you know, I'm not, I'm not reveling in this. It's just what has to be done. All right, so our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. The USA Freedom Act. I want to dig into this. We'll get started into it. I imagine it's going to be a little deeper, uh, so we'll probably end up carrying it into hour number three. But, Daryl, uh, what is this thing? So there are some people that are saying that the USA Freedom Act will end the surveillance state as we know it. That sounds ridiculous. And there are other organizations, uh, such as the Electronic Frontier Foundation, that until a couple of weeks ago actually supported this thing, that are now opposing this and saying, hmm. no, it's not going to change anything. The, oh, I bet it'll change something for the worse. The... <laughs> Right. Well, it's going to change how some of the surveillance is done, but it's mm -hmm. not going to change the surveillance state. I see. Uh, the story that I have here is from Reason.com, and they ask the question, is the USA Freedom Act the best we can expect right now? The article begins, it doesn't appear to be an easy, or, or rather, it doesn't appear to be easy to support the USA Freedom Act. The act's full real name is the Uniting and Strengthening America by Fulfilling <laughs> Rights and Ending Eavesdropping Dragnet Collection and Online Monitoring Act. Burr, burr, burr. Knowing yeah. the full name of the act helps explain why privacy supporters aren't shouting from the rafters over the legislation, even if they are supporting it. As is the case with many other bills with elaborate names, the USA Freedom Act doesn't actually do what its name states. Mm -hmm. The USA Freedom Act, which is H.R. 2048, is Congress's response to the public relations 
or rather the public revelation and the following outrage that the National Security Agency has been for years secretly collecting mass amounts of domestic metadata from virtually all Americans as part of its goal of sniffing out terrorists. And this is a public relations response. I mean, yes. this, that the point of this is to get people... Again, we're back into the headlines, right? Where the headline says this. The headline says Obama's going to stop giving military equipment to the police. Except Not for true. all of the equipment that he's still going to allow the police right. to receive. Not true. USA Freedom Act. We're going to protect you from the NSA. Not true either. Right. Surprise. The article continues. It says it has been doing so. It being the uh, NSA has been spying under the aegis of Section 215 of the USA Patriot Act, which allows the NSA and FBI supposedly to collect all sorts of data and records that are relevant to an ongoing investigation. Uh, I added the supposedly because there was a recent court decision that said that Section 215 of the USA Patriot Act doesn't actually say what the government says that it says. <laughs> uh, so now, you know, they're, they're coming up. Uh, that section of the Patriot Act is set to expire June 1st. The Congress goes on recess May 22nd for the Memorial Day. They're not coming back until after June. Okay. Uh, so and that's Mitch why McConnell Rand Paul's filibustering, right? Mitch McConnell put forth a bill to do an extension of Section 215. Initially, the proposal was to extend it for five years. Then he was like, "All right, we'll extend it for two months." And so Rand Paul's filibustering to try to prevent that from getting passed before they go on this hiatus. So the idea is if Rand Paul talks for two days straight, <laughs> that it'll stop this from happening? Right, because by June 1st, it will be removed from the law. So yeah. they won't be extending something that is current law. They would have to, to reenact a new law. And it's going to be a lot harder to reenact something that courts have already said you can't do. Can Rand Paul talk for two days straight, however? Probably not. No, I can't imagine he can. All I can really think of is, is that I had pigs named Rand Paul and Mitch McConnell. 855-450 free. We'll continue with more on the USA Freedom Act, this uh, filibuster, etc. Your thoughts are also welcome. Bring up anything. It's Free Talk Live. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or... Cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, May 20th, 2015. 
Silver is trading at $17.15 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,210 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $235. Antiwar.com reports after the Saudi government announced the end of their humanitarian truce on Yemen on Sunday night, a series of airstrikes were almost immediately reported across the south, centering on Aden. Overnight, the strikes began hitting the capital city of Sana'a again in earnest, and locals are reporting that the city is under the heaviest number of strikes since before the truce. Casualties so far are unclear, but there is a new civilian exodus out of the city as strikes centered around Yemeni military weapons depots. That's been the case with past Saudi strikes on Sana'a as well, with hilltop missile depots being hit in the strikes and setting up a series of explosions that tear through the residential neighborhoods below. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the FANS program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. UPI reports the Supreme Court ruled on Monday that Maryland's income tax law, allowing the state to double tax residents who pay income tax in a different state where they work, is unconstitutional. The court ruled with a divided 5-4 to four vote on Monday to uphold the Maryland Court of Appeals 2013 ruling that said that the tax law wrongly exposes Maryland residents to double taxation because it does not provide full tax credit for residents who also pay income taxes where they work. In most states with an income tax, people are taxed both where they work and where they live, but they receive a full income tax credit for out-of-state earnings. Justice Samuel Alito, who wrote the court's opinion, said the Maryland tax law forced some residents to pay income tax to more than one jurisdiction. North Carolina and Wisconsin, as well as the cities of New York City, Philadelphia, Cleveland, Detroit, Michigan, St. Louis, Missouri, Kansas City, and Wilmington, Delaware could also be affected by the ruling. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the Los Angeles City Council voted on Tuesday to increase the minimum wage in the nation's second largest city to $15 per hour by 2020 from the current rate of $9 an hour in what is being called a victory for labor and community groups that have pushed for similar pay hikes in several municipalities. The City Council's 14 to 1 vote on the measure, which must come back before the panel for final approval, would require businesses with more than 25 employees to meet the $15 per hour pay level by 2020 while smaller businesses would have an extra year to comply. Officials said the plan, which comes on the hills of similar minimum wage hikes in other major cities like Seattle and San Francisco, would increase pay for an estimated 800,000 workers in the city. City Councilman Curran Price Jr., one of the main backers of the proposal, said before the vote, We are embarking upon, I think, the most progressive minimum wage policy anywhere in the country. The proposal was given preliminary approval in Los Angeles, where housing costs are among the highest in the nation and is said to represent a far-reaching victory for supporters of higher pay for low-wage workers. The 67% pay increase would be implemented gradually starting at $10.50 per hour for larger employers in 2016 and gradually go up each year until it reaches $15 in 2020. Companies with 25 or fewer workers would follow a slightly slower stepped-up increase in minimum wage pay. Opponents of minimum wage hikes say they place an undue burden on businesses and would force employers to lay off workers or move. Other cities have also moved to increase their minimum wage in phases. Seattle is facing in a pay hike that would bring the minimum wage to $15 an hour over the next two to six years, depending on the size of the business. Voters in San Francisco have approved raising the minimum wage to $15 per hour by 2018. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
Citing their effortless physical strength, affability, and notable base tans, reports from the country's pools, lakes, and beaches have indicated that once again, the nation's Blakes coasted effortlessly through this year's seasonal lifeguard tryouts. Onion reporters spoke with Cincinnati Centennial Pools manager Charles Walker about the exceptional performance of his Blakes. We always see strong performances from Blakes, but this year's crop did especially well. Blake D did the 25-yard underwater swim in 86 seconds. Blake S and Blake C both carried subjects 40 yards without breaking a sweat. In addition to qualifying as pool managers and certified aquatics instructors, the nation's Blake significantly outshined the nation's stewards in swimming, performing CPR, diving, and glistening. I'm definitely looking forward to being a lifeguard this summer. I heard the test was kind of hard, but it was actually kind of easy. Our Kaylas are looking pretty strong too. As long as we have a few Blakes and Kaylas out there on the weekends, we'll be set. This is the Onion News Network. Hey, we're back with more Free Talk Live. Hour number three right now. Time for you if you want to dial in and join us here toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Rand Paul is making headlines right now for a filibuster of uh, what uh, Daryl was describing here. Apparently, the Patriot Act, at least some of the provisions, are going to expire June 1st. Congress is going on a break on the 22nd of this yes. month, and the break is going to last beyond June 1st. So the, yes. I- the idea is that if this uh, if Congress is filibustered until the 22nd, when they go on their vacation or whatever, that that would stop this uh, portion of the Patriot Act from continuing on or being renewed or, or whatever. Is that right? Right. And so that's what's happening right now. And then all tied up in this is this uh, USA Freedom Act that, Daryl, you had begun telling us about in the last hour. Can you briefly recap what this thing is? Yes. So the USA Freedom Act is the uniting and strengthening America by fulfilling rights and ending eavesdropping, dragnet collection, and online monitoring act. I wonder how long it took him to come up with that one. Uh, My guess is it's probably one of the backronyms. Backronyms? That, that's where you come up with a word and then you figure out things to fill in. Right, that's what I'm saying. I wonder how long it took him to figure it out. I mean, it's a lot of letters to to put in there. Freedom. Well, the uniting and strengthening America is generally what USA stands for. Right, in that's these... what it was in the Patriot Act, too. Right. Yeah. Uh, so freedom it probably did not take them very long. Okay. Uh, you know, and of course, if they couldn't have come up with all of the words they'd have just still called it the freedom act and america right so the reason that this it this is needed and i'm using air quotes there is because of the uh, revelations by edward snowden that the nsa is surveilling pretty much everything and they do so supposedly under section 215 of the usa patriot act which allowed the NSA and FBI to collect all sorts of data and records that are, quote, relevant to an ongoing investigation. But the article here from Reason continues, the NSA and the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court that oversaw approval of record collections took a very, very, very wide view of what was relevant, and that included, among other things, the phone records of every single American, There was an awareness among privacy experts that this was happening, but because the entire process was classified, the ability for anybody, even members of Congress, to do much was limited. Now, the court did slap down their interpretation of what was relevant, from what I understand, right? Like, they said, NSA, you've gone too far. Right. They said that Section 215 cannot bear the burden that you are attempting to place upon it. But and now, then the, the NSA released all the private uh, conversations of the judges between their <laughs> mistresses. Well, now all they're going to do is just, you know, the supposedly to fix this, they're going to have to go through the FISA court to get their approval to spy on whoever they want to spy on. So it's not like they're going to be prevented from spying on people. They just might put one extra hoop in front of them. And, of course, we're presuming they're going to follow that rule in the first place, which why would they follow the rule? I mean, what's going to be the punishment? for There's been no consequence There is no consequence. The the only person that is being punished is the individual that leaked the documents revealing that crimes were taking place. The the same thing with the CIA. When uh, the CIA 
was revealed to have been torturing people, the only person from the CIA that went to jail was the guy that revealed the documents that proved that the CIA was torturing people. Yep, that's true. So the article here from Reason continues. It says, then... Edward Snowden came around and released information showing how remarkably expansive the NSA surveillance actually was. This all came as a surprise to Representative James Sensenbrenner, who introduced the USA Patriot Act in 2001. He said it was never his intent to authorize mass collection of the data of Americans in the first place. The USA Freedom Act, which Sensenbrenner has also sponsored, is intended to reform these procedures. But what the USA Freedom Act actually does is fairly modest compared to the amount of surveillance authority the NSA has claimed for itself. It will end the bulk collection of phone metadata collection under Section 215, but that's not the only avenue by which the federal government claims authority to collect huge amounts of private information. (laughs) Well, you can't collect it for this reason, but you can go ahead and collect it for that reason. Nice. Furthermore, right now we're seeing the third attempt to get the act passed, and the strength of the reforms has been watered down along the way. Indeed, some of the reforms call for in the act, storing the telecommunications data with the companies rather than the government and requiring the government to request it. That came from former NSA director Keith Alexander. The support of the Obama administration has itself given some pause due to its role in fighting lawsuits against the program and the blatant deception of current Director of Intelligence James Clapper before the Senate about the existence of mass phone record collections. What the USA Freedom Act is intended to do is end mass domestic data collection through Section 215, as well as in the secretive national security letters and require quote-unquote specific selection items to limit mass record requests. I've got to say I really am not a fan of those uh, national security letters. I'd love to see those things ended with no matter what the Mm -hmm. bill is. It also reforms the FISA court to designate several independent advisors to the court to help provide legal arguments that advance the protection of individual privacy and civil liberties, making the FISA court a slightly more adversarial place rather than the apparent rubber stamp factory it has been. Yeah, it's all on paper, though, right? Like, you know, they're just going to pass some, if the, if this thing passes, they're going to pass this law, and they're going to say, you know, cheering out from the rooftops, yeah, we've reigned in the NSA, now they're going to have to go through this slightly more difficult process with the secret court that you really can't know what's going on with because they're secret. I mean, you can't verify any of these things are actually happening, right? uh, It would also mandate a declassification review process for the FISA court decisions. So it's not declassifying everything. It just puts in a a process process to declassify some of the... They'll they'll review whether to declassify. Maybe we'll think about it and no. Right. The article here continues, and just a reminder, the title of the article is, Is the USA Freedom Act the Best We Can Expect Right Now? The article continues, but it's also really hard to try to gauge the impact of the bill as written, and that's coloring perceptions of its value. Making the situation more complicated is a federal court ruling that is actually friendly to privacy reformers. On May 7th, the Second Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that Section 215 never actually authorized the NSA to right. engage in mass phone metadata collection in the first place. I wonder who'll go to jail. Nobody. Edward Snowden, if he ever <laughs> comes back to the United States of America. You're yeah. telling me the NSA illegally collected all this information on Americans? That's and, correct. Uh, foreign and people? And Edward Snowden will be the only one to go to jail if he ever comes back. Just like with the CIA, they tortured how many people, and the only guy to go to jail is the guy that leaked the documents. Because, well, that was classified information. You can't leak classified information. Right. doesn't matter what it's classified at or with all the horrible things it shows us doing. And, and then David Petraeus had leaked some classified documents to his mistress who was writing his autobiography. He took a plea deal and gets like two years probation. Mm. The, That's accurate. The article here continues. It says the court, that being the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, ruled that the NSA had stretched the definition of relevance and investigation too far by scooping up pretty much everything and storing it in just and storing it just in case it might be useful later. 
But the court also did not demand an immediate change, partly because it knew Congress was already working on legislation to deal with the pending sunset of Section 215. And the court can't bring charges either, right? So it would have to be the Justice Department who decides to bring charges against any of these actors in this case, and they're just not going to. Right, no, this doesn't say charges. It says it did not demand changes. No, I know that. I'm saying the court oh, okay. cannot bring charges. So right. even though they're saying what you did was illegal, they can't do anything about it in the courts. It right. would have to be the prosecutors who do that. And what's the interest in... Or, you know, or one of these grand juries that would indict a ham sandwich before a government employee. Yeah, I mean, those grand juries only do what they're told by whoever their handlers are. So we'll come back with more. On yeah, there, the, there's more. The USA Freedom Act. And then a little bit of good news out of the Supreme Court about taxes in certain states. Uh, 855-450 frees our number. It's Free Talk Live. Honestly, we canceled an appointment to have Jake euthanized to give Dynavite a chance to save this dog's life. Jake is an eight-year-old male Akita. His entire stomach and groin area, his face, his elbows, his ears, every orifice was just riddled with yeast and sores. We had a vet treat him, and Jake didn't respond at all. My son heard the commercial for Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Within four days, Jake started to heal. It was the most amazing thing I have ever seen. The yeast is receding, and now his belly is completely cleared up. It chokes me up. It brings tears to my eyes. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like they, bailout they candy, that Fantasy Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time mm. to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. 
Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Back now with more Free Talk Live. Our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We're talking about the so-called USA Freedom Act. Is it actually going to do a damn thing to make the NSA less likely to collect bulk data about you? Daryl is shaking his head. Uh, and he is uh, well informed on this. We're going to continue with that here in a moment. And uh, in the meantime, I want to let you know about Hypercronius. It's the year... Nine one zero zero one. How do you say that in years? Ninety one thousand one. Ninety one thousand one. Yeah, let's do okay. that. Ninety one thousand one BCE, and a genocidal conquest has brought one world to an end, only to usher in the beginning of our own. Witness humanity's origins in Hypercronius. It's a new role-playing game for Windows PCs from our former co-host here on Free Talk Live, Brian Sovereign. You might know him from Sovereign Tech. Uh, and Zomia Offline Games with a story like no other game before. Full motion video, classic graphics, and pick up and play controls. Hypercronius is a liberty oriented experience that is not to be missed. Go check it out over at Zog.ninja. That's a website. It is the website, yes. Zog, Z O G, dot ninja. To find out more, you can see the trailer and get your copy of Hypercronius. And if you use coupon code FTL, you'll save a buck. And because, you know, this. Isn't a high price game in the first place, so a buck's actually pretty pretty decent. It's, discount it's here. a high percentage. It's like uh, a seven dollar game, I think. Yeah, six or something like that. Uh, you can purchase it with Bitcoin, by the way, over at Zog.ninja. And don't forget code FTL for Hypercronius from Brian Sovereign. All right, I'll try. I bought it with Bitcoin. Our toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Uh, so Daryl, continue with more from. And what was the source on this story? Was it Reason? This is Reason.com. Okay. This is about the USA so-called Freedom Act. Yes. Uh, the question that they ask is, is the USA Freedom Act the best we can expect right now? Uh, and they're talking about the ruling that happened earlier this month out of the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, where that court ruled that Section 215 of the USA Patriot Act didn't actually do what the government said that it did. And they say that the ruling prompted some rethinking of the USA Freedom Act by the Electronic Frontier Foundation. The group had previously endorsed each iteration of the act, increasingly reluctant as it was watered down with each session. In response to the court ruling, though, EFF withdrew its support and went neutral, hmm. calling for legislators to now strengthen the act. Mark Jaycox, a legislative analyst at EFF, who had been writing about the USA Freedom Act, still has positive things to say about it, but doesn't want Congress to settle for less than it has to. It's the first reform of NSA surveillance since the 1970s. Wow. There should be more to it. Hmm. Jaycox says the USA Freedom Act should be stronger. Congress should be pushing for more control for themselves and more for the public. Well, it's like Mark said, though. I mean, these NSA guys can have all kinds of files and information on all of these congressmen. There's no reason for them to push beyond what they've already done. What they've already done is just doing nothing more than putting a, if you want to even consider it, any kind of barrier, a very, very small barrier, one that can easily be stepped over uh, in front of the NSA. And that presumes that they're going to follow the rules in the first place. If they just keep collecting data, who the hell in Congress is ever going to know that? Right. And... Uh, just something that I would like to add before continuing with the article is the USA Freedom Act. It now dictates that the telecommunication companies are to collect the data so that the oh government my. can then request it with one of these secret court orders out of the FISA court. Basically, no change at all. Just uh, corporate corporations holding the information. Instead right. Of the, the, the difference is who is actually the one holding and collecting the data, not what is being held and collected. Mm. It's horrifying. The article continues. The EFF would like Congress to return to the first iteration of the act that called for a stronger adversarial position within the FISA court, not just as an advisor. 
They want Congress to address other authorizations, just like, or rather, used to justify bulk metadata collection, not just to, not just Section 215 or national security letters. They want better minimization procedures to make sure information is not directly connected to an investigation is properly purged. And they want to remove the emergency exception that allows the government to snoop on any non-U.S. person for 72 hours without any court's authorization at all. Now, hold on. The peop- What you're saying there is there's the, the group of uh, with the EFF or the whatever. The EFF. That's what they want, but the current act isn't doing any of those things. Right. They- because the current law was watered down through each committee that yeah. it's gone through. It was watered down on the floor of the House. It was watered down in the Senate committee. And it's probably going to be watered down even more on the floor of, of the, the Senate. Senate. And they're saying, no, go back to the original. Mm, yeah, that's Forget not all happen. of these amendments. Go back <laughs> to the original. It's just not going to happen. I mean, the EFF doesn't have the political clout necessary to make anything like that happen. And the NSA has all of the clout necessary to make sure that they stay. Clout? Uh, they may very well have know where the bodies are buried. Right, I that's mean, what they, I mean. They've been collecting the data on these Congress critters for years now. They know how, what you know who's taken the bad, who's who's taking illegal funding. They know who's got a mistress. They know who's been taking they're drugs. Smart, they know those They things, know right? who's doing boys in the bathroom. They, they know it all. Let's talk to James. He's in Kalamazoo listening via the TuneIn app. Hey, James. Uh, hello. Um, all right. Now, uh, I, I agree with like 98% of the content on the show. Um, uh, I just uh, wanted to bring up actually a couple criticisms. Okay. Well, that's more um, interesting anyway. It, <laughs> Good. Uh, as you know, uh, you know, usually when I call, I, I'm agreeing with you guys, but um, I have to uh, bring up uh, something that the two of you said in the last segment of last night's show um that i actually uh, uh well uh mark i'm sorry uh, ian and mark i know you aren't there daryl um that i personally don't agree with um which is uh talking essentially to the people i you know that we know about our ideas of liberty um and then I, i'd also like to kind of segue that into uh an opinion I have about the start of today's show. Okay, well, um, um, t- tell us tell us what you want to say, I mean, rather than telling us what, what you're yeah. going to tell us. Yeah. What is it? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, I think that actually one of uh, the biggest things that I can do for the cause of liberty myself is to um, demis- demonstrate it in my daily life. And that means explaining to somebody why I do or don't do certain things. And I think that it's uh, pretty important. And it seems to me as if uh, uh, Ian and Mark uh, last night in the last segment of the show kind of talked about how they don't tend to talk uh, to people around them about the ideas of liberty. Um, Whereas I personally uh, think that it's very important to educate the people that I know yeah, I think you might have misunderstood. So let me see if I can clarify a little bit here. Um, I don't even remember. I, like I, this yeah, what, is so far removed from this, I don't even have any idea what you're talking about. What I was saying is I don't push my ideas on sort of the people in you know my life. Right? It's different being on the radio. We're pushing ideas here all night, you know, three hours a night, seven nights a week. Uh, but as far as like in regular relationships with people, you, in my opinion, do do not you do yourself a disservice by being pushy with ideas, like trying to sort of shove them down people's throats, giving I, them these, make, asking them the really hard questions, or uh, whatever, or or just bringing up issues and throwing them into a conversation with you about it. Um, I'd rather wait until an opportunity comes up to express my viewpoint when I'm invited uh, to do so, when the other person is genuinely interested in that. Now, if you'd like to respond, you're welcome to. So stand by, James. We'll bring you back for that. 855 450 free. Uh, I think it's a little more tactical that way, and a little more, res- the, the person will be more receptive. More coming up. Quantitative easing, unemployment at depression levels, Europe financial system falling apart, China getting out of U.S. treasuries. At the end of 2008, the time of TARP, the national debt was at 11 trillion gold, trading around $850 per ounce. Close to 2012, the national debt exceeded 16.4 trillion, gold doubled to $1,600 per ounce. The 20 trillion threshold for the national debt is inevitable. Politicians in Washington have a ferocious appetite for spending and stimulus. What's worse, a printing press to finance. 
A hundred years ago, we had a gold standard to limit this madness, but now you have to adopt your own gold standard. Don't be fooled with paper promises. Get Midas Resources 10 Reasons to Buy Gold free by calling 800-686-2237. Understanding the gold and silver market may be the only insurance you could have to avoiding the next economic crisis. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order your free copy. Again, that's 800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis, battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. 855-453 is our number, 855-450-3733. And we invite you via Skype to join us that way. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. I'm going to Freedom Fest. It's uh, July the 7th through the 11th. Actually, it's the 8th through the 11th, but you should arrive a day early. So think of it as uh, July 7th to the 11th at Planet Hollywood in Las Vegas. Um, It's a really incredible event, and this year is going to be the best ever. It's called Discover the New American Dream. And did I say it was at Planet Hollywood in Las Vegas? It's going to be a really great event. Uh, This is the world's largest gathering of free minds, and this year they're having what they're calling the historic dream debate of the century. Paul Krugman and Steve Moore. Steve Moore is the Wall Street Journal columnist and chief economist for the Heritage Foundation. And Paul Krugman is the Nobel Prize winning economist and New York Times columnist. And they're going to debate austerity versus stimulus, red state versus blue state, flat tax versus progressive tax. 
you're only going to see something this epic at Freedom Fest. Uh, there's also going to be lots of big names there, including Dinesh D'Souza, George Gilder, Glenn Beck, Senator Mike Lee, Steve Forbes, Peter Thiel, Congressman Alan West, uh, many, many, many more. Uh, Mark Skousen's, uh, of course, uh, behind putting it all on. Go to freedomfest.com. When you register, please, please click on radio that you heard on radio. That way we get credit for it and they know that uh, we're effectively bringing people to them. They're still skeptical and we'd love to be able to uh, you know, have a much bigger relationship with them. Freedomfest.com or you can give them a call. Be sure to mention Free Talk Live if you do. 855-850-FREE. It's 855-850-FREE. If you are going, please come and look me up and let them know that uh, that you're coming and you're a listener of Free Talk Live. Good idea. All right, so our toll-free number tonight is 855-453. We're bringing James back on in Kalamazoo. He's talking about uh, talking with people, expressing to them the ideas of liberty and his approach to it. Uh, so, James, do continue. Yes. Uh, well, and, and I, I agree that um, or it has to come up in, in conversation organically. Um, and so I, I certainly agree. Maybe I just uh, misunderstood uh, how you guys were bringing it up. But, but when I meet people, they, after a very short period of time, they start to see that I have different ideas and different oh, yeah. approaches. And, uh, you know, to, to everything. And, you know, uh, for example... Um, I, I do a lot of uh, a lot of outreach to uh, the homeless here locally, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know I, I hear about many of these people that are in these in their position uh, because of like drugs or something, and I'm like, well, you know, and they're beating themselves up like, oh my god, you know, I I pled guilty to this and I got to do this, that, and the other, and I'm like, why? Well, why did you plead guilty? And it just comes up organically in conversation, as well as, you know, any close friend that I have. Um, and I just feel that it's important. Uh, and, of course, it has to come up organically. I can't just go walk up, hi, I'm James, and uh, this is my ideas of liberty, unless, of course, I'm doing Well, some I do that, too, right, because I do outreach, and that's me literally handing the ideas of liberty to people in the streets but not really having conversation beyond that in most instances because I want to move through as many people as possible. But I, den I tend to agree with you. In a circumstance where you're dealing with a coworker, you're dealing with somebody that uh, you're going to school with, you're dealing with somebody that you know you uh, is in your family, whatever friends, it's the organic conversations that are going to be the ones they remember. They're going to be the ones that have the the greatest impact. They're going to be the ones where they're ask if they're asking you your opinion, that means they actually do have an interest in finding it out rather than you pushing it on them. So it sounds like we agree here, James. Okay, yeah, and I, I guess I just mis misunderstood, and, and by doing so, I'm finding that more people agree with the idea of, I mean, granted, there are plenty of statists out there, but there are yeah, plenty more of people that, <laughs> that agree with the ideas of liberty than, I think more people are libertarians than actually will admit it. Now, I think that's um, true. Yeah, I, I heard that the numbers go up like 15 points if um, they, you know, 15 percentage points if you say instead of are you fiscally conservative and socially, is, is saying are you fiscally conservative and socially liberal versus are you fiscally uh, conservative and socially liberal, like a libertarian, like you can bump without the using the word libertarian. Without using gives the word, you better results. Yeah, without using the term libertarian, um, this is some old numbers, but I'd be interested in seeing what they look like and today. It also depends on how far you define the term libertarian, because yeah. I've heard some libertarians that want to define the term so broadly that everybody except for Barack Obama and Adolf Hitler <laughs> are libertarians. I've heard that, too, well, but I've also heard plenty of people who, um, when they hear the term libertarian, they think it means liberal. And this is not, you know, but like we're so far into it that we never see this happen in our real lives. But I've seen it happen more and more. Um, it's just people don't know what this term means. Libertarian doesn't they don't know what it means. Well, uh, for, in, in my case, you know, I thought for the longest time that I was a liberal because I cared more about the social issues. You know, I thought I was a liberal. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I'm like, well, I, I don't I really don't agree with the big government and the war. You know, there are a lot of stuff I don't agree with. And actually, of all people, uh, I know he's not your best friend, but at least he got me to start thinking about the ideas was Neil Bortz when I actually heard him. 
Oh yeah, I used to like the Neil Bohr it. show. Sure. Yeah, back when. Uh, yeah. Back when. It's it all was, there was. <laughs> ba- right, back when a Democrat was president in the late 1990s, Neil Bohr sounded a lot more libertarian. Well, he was also a member of the Libertarian Party. Is and- he not anymore? No, he left in like the early part of the Bush administration mm-hmm. because James, uh, America. And, and, Go ahead, James. And, and well, I, I just kind of wanted to segue. I, I don't like to take up too much time. I, I mentioned a segue into the, the uh, you know, first, um, you know, essentially the first hour of today's show that I actually use you guys as kind of uh, when I tell people and. You know, I'm like, well, I don't have time right now to tell you. You know, I'm at work slicing meat right now. But, you know, there's the show on, and I tell them about you guys oh, great. and how to find you. And then uh, I just uh, – honestly, after the first hour today, I hung – or I just – I tuned out because I couldn't deal with it because what if that was somebody's first time listening to the show? I personally don't think I, – I, I, all right, I like Christopher Cantwell. All right, I, I know that he's You're referring no to our yet. discussion about Chris Cantwell using the N-word on Twitter and why we suspended yeah. him on the radio. I, look, if you don't like some of the things we talk about here, then spe- select specific shows to share uh, with your friends. But sometimes we cover topics that some of the people who tune in aren't going to like. I mean, it's not all yeah, liberty uh, all the time here on Free Talk Live. Sometimes it's sort of the internals of how a talk show operates behind the scenes. We talk about this stuff. You know, we're not going to hide behind our microphones and not take calls about uh, controversial issues. We'll talk about things like, you know, ending the war on drugs, which is going to offend some people who might otherwise be friendly to the idea of, you know, lower taxes or something like that. So at any given night, there may be something we say that someone tuning in for the first time is going to be offended by. And really, there's nothing we can change about that. Thanks, James, for your call tonight. The toll free number is 855-450-FREE. I thought we handled the Chris Cantwell situation in as best manner as possible. We put it all out there. We talked about what was happening in uh, in detail, and people had opinions. They called in about it. Yeah, ultimately, there's nothing we can um, you know do about it. I understand that. I understand when you're you know t- getting people to listen to the show that you'd like it to be the way you want it to be every moment, but. We handled it right, in my opinion. That's I totally the reason, agree. That's the reason we handled it. We handled it, um, s- s- you know, that way. And if somebody's listening, they're like, well, "Okay, these are some guys that at least have enough, uh, you know, backbone to put somebody on suspension if they, you know, use the N word." Well, of course, some others are saying we don't have enough backbone because you know we didn't stand behind Chris uh, on this one. So again, you can't make everybody happy, and if you try making everyone happy, you'll just end up really unhappy because it won't work out for you. <laughs> Uh, so let's continue. Pizza Guy is on the line in Fargo. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. I don't know if you know what's going on or if it's been mentioned, but I just want to bring up that Dr. Paul is filibustering the Patriot Act. He's been going seven hours strong. Jeez. Is it true that he and- has no one supporting him in this? No, I heard uh, there there was a senator from Montana that was speaking for a little bit earlier. Oh, really? Okay. It's good to know. Stand right. by, Pizza Guy. We can talk. We actually already have talked about it, but uh, you know, if you've got something else to add, you're welcome to join us here. 855 450 free. More with the Pizza Guy here in moments. And the remaining moments of the show are coming up. So you got enough time to get your call in if you make it right now. We've got room for you. 855 450 free. Or join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Every summer we go to Canyon Woods. Love getting outside. Love the hiking. Hate the itching and irritation from poison ivy, bug bites, all the things that keep me inside. So I need something strong. Cortisone 10 Intensive Healing is clinically proven with the strongest non-prescription itch medicine available for fast, long-lasting relief of itching and irritation with seven moisturizers to help heal skin. I finally have the relief I need. Hey, Jan, check this out. On my way. Cortisone 10. Feel the heal. 
If you constantly feel run down and tired, your pH level might be low and your body could be full of toxins. If what you drink is not at a pH level of 8 or higher, you are inviting bacteria and acid to thrive in your body. But there is something you can do. Simply add 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops to your water to help your body rid itself of acidic waste, increase oxygen, and raise your pH balance to optimum levels. AlkaVision Plasma pH drops combine a unique formula of the most alkaline minerals in the world. Alkalizing the water you you drink, ridding your body of acidic waste and toxins, and helping you regain energy and vibrant health. And studies show viruses, bacteria, and toxins cannot survive in an alkaline, high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops at AlkaVision.com. That's A L K A Vision.com. Or call 269 409 1776. 269 409 1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. In every age, a technology is created that upends the foundations of society. The wheel, the printing press, the internet. Now, in a world sliding into financial chaos, a new technology is changing the way monetary systems work around the world. It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new form of money controlled not by banks, governments, or corporations, but through mutual commerce between free individuals. To learn more, visit WeUseCoins.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. Time enough for you to share your thoughts here with us at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio, it's Ian. Daryl. And Mark. And don't forget, you can support the show by going to AMP Free Talk Live. Just go to AMP, A-M-P dot freetalklive.com. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. And the idea is a simple one. You send five bucks a month in via any major credit card through PayPal or Visa or MasterCard right on our website. And Free Talk Live will take that $5 and invest it into the show to help us get on more radio stations around the country, bring more Internet listeners on board, and expose new people to the ideas of freedom. By the way, uh, sort of related to the AMP program, which, again, you get perks like the uh, AMP-only call-in lines, AMP-only forum, AMP-only Facebook group. Go get signed up, please, at amp.freetalklive.com. But uh, in other related news, the satellite fundraiser, we talked in detail last night about how I considered it to be a success and that I was in negotiations with the satellite provider. The negotiations have completed at this point. I know nothing Uh, of this. I have not. Yeah, I haven't mentioned this to anybody. Well, uh, the contract hasn't been signed, but I did get an email back confirming my offer uh, has been accepted. Well, my initial offer, I guess their counter offer was accepted by their management. So my initial offer was that I would pay uh, $4,500 per year for two satellite channels, uh, which they had originally asked for a little more than $4,500 per year. They'd asked for $600 a month, which would 4500 breaks down to about 375 a month. 
And uh, so I offered 375 a month. And for the two channels, they said, we don't have that access to that second channel. I wanted to get on a second uh, transponder on the same satellite over Africa to cover South Africa because the current signal that we're going to be having doesn't really cover South Africa at all. It's more like Central Africa, yeah. West Central. Sort of East, West, Central Africa, sort of a, a big swath of the middle of Africa. And uh, anyway, they said they don't have a transponder on that other KU band transmitter, if you will. And so uh, they came back and said, you know, well, I'll take this, or the salesman said, I'll take this to management. And, you know, I, well, I agreed that he could take it to management. And they came back and said, yes. So we're going to get it for actually just about the amount that we raised for the satellite fundraiser. So for a year. For one a year. or two channels. I, I'm still just confused. Just one channel. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. So great news. I mean, it's working. Yeah. Congratulations. You got half of what you wanted. Well, Mark, I asked for <laughs> twice. For, I asked for twice more than what I originally had knowing that I likely wasn't going to get what I was asking for. Those are good numbers. And so then they came down to, uh, you know, basically we'd be paying slightly less than what we're currently paying for the U.S. and uh, North and Central America satellite coverage to be over Africa again. And I'm very excited about it. And it's thanks to listeners like you for donating to the satellite fundraiser that made you guys made this happen. And uh, we basically raised enough money to actually cover it. Which and I'm really excited about. Mark, one of the tools of negotiating is you ask for more than you want. That right. way, when they counteroffer, you get what you actually wanted. Really? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, back to Pizza Guy. He's on in Fargo calling about the filibuster, which we did discuss briefly earlier. Uh, Rand Paul filibustering up, presumably, if he can go through the 22nd. Is if is it if he goes through midnight uh like midnight on the 22nd like when does he have to end this like the the evening of the 21st whenever mitch mcconnell says that we're going on break okay but they're scheduled to begin their recess on the 22nd so he could presumably wait they have other uh bills that they want to vote on mm -hmm. so they'll likely wind up at some point having a vote to end the filibuster and then either vote on this you know, USA Freedom Act, vote on the uh, let's reauthorize Section 215, vote on So they can just anything. vote to, I'm sorry, they can just vote to end a filibuster? I thought the whole idea of the filibuster was that prevents a vote from happening. No, at some point, they can have a vote. Like, if he stops talking for mm -hmm. 12 seconds to take a drink of water, I see. somebody can say, point of order, let's vote. Ah, uh, I see. If he, you know, has to step off of the stage to go use the bathroom. So basically, if nobody else is talking in his stead. Mm -hmm. Point of order, let's vote. So is there an a certain amount of seconds that someone has to stop before someone can put a point of order in? Uh I I don't know if there's, you know, like a number of seconds, but yeah. I I do know that if the person leaves the official speaking stage, mm -hmm then somebody can say, let's vote to end the filibuster. But if he takes a drink of water? I, I'm hypothesizing it? there. Like, if he takes a long pause, yeah. then I, I don't know if it would be uh, you know, considered to be something that was in order. Hmm. You know, like if he pauses and, like, fills up his glass yeah. and drinks, somebody could say, let's vote, whether or not that's a valid motion. Okay, so you're not I sure about that. I don't know, but I do know that if he steps out of the speaking area and nobody else steps in to continue. But you said there was a guy. By the way, pizza guy dropped off the line. I'm not sure what happened there. I, I picked up his line and he dropped off. Must not like Rand Paul that much. Um, he's obviously loves Rand Paul. That's <laughs> all he sure ever does. calls about these he days. He sure does. Uh, so, but, okay, so what we've got here is Rand Paul. They've he's got the holiday recess yep. no, for but, Memorial Day. Now, if the, the boss guy wants Mitch to. Mitch McConnell. If he wants to uh, take the recess later, can he do that? Or do they have to take the recess on the 22nd? Like, if uh, he's like, all right, we're going to go another 24 that, hours. That would require a suspension of rules mm -hmm. that they've already agreed on. Like, that that's one of the rules. Like, we have breaks that are hard time yep. into the show you can't just move that because well we want to finish talking about this mm -hmm. like you have to contact people ahead of time and say we want to move our break okay instead of beginning at 16 minutes after the hour to begin at 19 and because he's filibustering then they wouldn't be able to motion to suspend the rules right so presuming 
they've set a certain time on the 21st that they're going to go home, you know, 7 p.m. I, I don't or think they've midnight. set a time on the 22nd, just that the 22nd is when the vacation begins. So 11.59 p.m. on the 21st at midnight, they have to end this thing. Is that right? No. Like, you know, they could wait until... You know, eleven fifty nine p.m. on the twenty second. Oh, so any time on the twenty second, they could. Sometime on the twenty second is when the recess begins. So if he doesn't have help with this filibuster thing, it's really nothing more than symbolic, right? Like he's right. It's just like the the other thing where he got up and talked about drones and read from Alice in Wonderland. Well, let's not just downplay some politician taking a principled symbolic stand. I mean, it was a symbolic stand. I'm not downplaying it. I'm just saying that's what it is. It's not going to stop the Patriot Act, right? Unless there's another five guys who are willing to get up there, or however many, because you need at least probably right. two or three or something uh, to get up there. You did say there was some Montana senator. Then there was a out? senator from Montana that, while I was doing some stuff in the CAC, I overheard because Rich Paul was listening Keen to the filibuster. Center. And I heard some guy talking about, you know, people in Montana where I'm from. And I was like, Rand Paul's not from Montana. And then, you know, he finished speaking and then Rand started talking. I'd like to thank the senator from Montana. Right. So, you know, there, so there are short. people. So that dude got up to give him kind of a short break right. kind of deal. Like, you know, got to go to the bathroom, need to get a yeah. cup of water or whatever. Right. Okay. Well, it's good to know that he does have some support. I, I was- forget who the senator was. I think it may have been Strom Thurmond that He's at dead. one He's time. Dead. I know he's dead. <laughs> he hasn't but finished his sentence. <laughs> he, he used to be a senator, and he did a really long filibuster one time, and he had yes. a bucket in a closet, and he had it in such a way as to where he could be in the bucket and still have one foot in the speaking area. Really? And he would speak while he peed in the bucket. Now that's pretty talented. Now, is it one of those things where, and that guy was a scumbag, right? He wasn't he like a white supremacist or something like that? He was. Um, but this, no, still, creative idea. Now, is that one of those things where if you are speaking to Congress, you cannot be arrested for violating the law? So therefore, if he's exposing himself in front of Congress, it's not totally like he legal? turned around towards the what? Like he still the public urination is generally considered a crime. I mean, if you were to go pee in the streets in Washington D.C. or pee anywhere in the you know outside of a bathroom inside the this is the Congress. Senate chambers. Well, what if this you're is peeing? by no means uh, the worst thing that's happened there. I can assure you. Like if you're in your house and you pee in a bucket in your house, that's not public urination. Let's go to Nathan. He's in Texas. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Nathan. Uh, I was really interested in that remark that Mark made before about the uh, advertising. Um, I'm surprised that nothing like this has ever happened to FTL before. I nothing mean, like what? It seems, well, like someone using a controversial word or someone taking some kind well, of Actually, it has. That- we, uh, we've lost radio stations over our position on the military. And advertisers. Yeah, that's true. Right, but I was thinking mostly about like offensive, um, I guess, speech or something along those lines. It's offensive uh, to people. And, that- you know, I, right, and I don't mean to criticize you, Ian. It's just, a, I guess, I'm just kind of surprised that Mark had to build a case for this. I mean, I was reading the wiki article about Laura Schlesinger, and I had no idea that it was a dirty word or whatever that got her off the air. It was the N word. Uh, she said yeah, it, it three times in a row. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So right. I mean, we've had these controversial things happen, not with the N word previously, and we didn't actually have it. You know, didn't happen on the air. We've lost stations over what we've said on the radio. That didn't even happen in this case. Hey, thanks for the call tonight, Nathan. Appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow online. In the meantime, at freetalklive.com. Don't forget to check out Daryl's websites, fpp.cc and fppradio.com. And again, we'll see you at freetalklive.com. Here's. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 
101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, May 20th, 2015. Silver is trading at $17.15 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,210 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $235. Antiwar.com reports after the Saudi government announced the end of their humanitarian truce on Yemen on Sunday night, a series of airstrikes were almost immediately reported across the south, centering on Aden. Overnight, the strikes began hitting the capital city of Sana'a again in earnest, and locals are reporting that the city is under the heaviest number of strikes since before the truce. Casualties so far are unclear, but there is a new civilian exodus out of the city as strikes centered around Yemeni military weapons depots. That's been the case with past Saudi strikes on Sana'a as well, with hilltop missile depots being hit in the strikes and setting up a series of explosions that tear through the residential neighborhoods below. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numeri supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the FANS program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. UPI reports the Supreme Court ruled on Monday that Maryland's income tax law, allowing the state to double tax residents who pay income tax in a different state where they work, is unconstitutional. The court ruled with a divided 5-4 to four vote on Monday to uphold the Maryland Court of Appeals 2013 ruling that said that the tax law wrongly exposes Maryland residents to double taxation because it does not provide full tax credit for residents who also pay income taxes where they work. In most states with an income tax, people are taxed both where they work work and where they live, but they receive a full income tax credit for out-of-state earnings. Justice Samuel Alito, who wrote the court's opinion, said the Maryland tax law forced some residents to pay income tax to more than one jurisdiction. North Carolina and Wisconsin, as well as the cities of New York City, Philadelphia, Cleveland, Detroit, Michigan, St. Louis, Missouri, Kansas City, and Wilmington, Delaware could also be affected by the ruling. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the Los Angeles City Council voted on Tuesday to increase the minimum wage in the nation's second largest city to $15 per hour by 2020 from the current rate of $9 an hour in what is being called a victory for labor and community groups that have pushed for similar pay hikes in several municipalities. The City Council's 14 to 1 vote on the measure, which must come back before the panel for final approval, would require businesses with more than 25 employees to meet the $15 per hour pay level by 2020 
while smaller businesses would have an extra year to comply. Officials said the plan, which comes on the hills of similar minimum wage hikes in other major cities like Seattle and San Francisco, would increase pay for an estimated 800,000 workers in the city. City Councilman Curran Price Jr., one of the main backers of the proposal, said before the vote, We are embarking upon, I think, the most progressive minimum wage policy anywhere in the country. The proposal was given preliminary approval in Los Angeles, where housing costs are among the highest in the nation and is said to represent a far-reaching victory for supporters of higher pay for low-wage workers. The 67% pay increase would be implemented gradually, starting at $10.50 per hour for larger employers in 2016 and gradually go up each year until it reaches $15 in 2020. Companies with 25 or fewer workers would follow a slightly slower stepped-up increase in minimum wage pay. Opponents of minimum wage hikes say they place an undue burden on businesses and would force employers to lay off workers or move. Other cities have also moved to increase their minimum wage in phases. Seattle is facing in a pay hike that would bring the minimum wage to $15 an hour over the next two to six years, depending on the size of the business. Voters in San Francisco have a 